remaining land. A portion of the portion of land that's to be conveyed to the subject lot was part of the 1995 subdivision plan. Um, and so I guess in, in reviewing what the applicants put together for their subdivision plan, we didn't see reference to that 1980 plan which originally created the subject lot. And more particularly, that subdivision is where the, the planning board then, when they approved the lot, all the land divisions had a condition that the um, all access be gained off Ginn Road, and the board has been long considering access off limited access right in, right out along Payne Road for this application. Um, and so we just think that that's an important element to be noted on the subdivision plan. Um, and so we think there's some additional work in referencing that, that should be done uh, in, in that vein. Additionally, we have just a question regarding the area of land conveyance, um, the smaller area, the triangle area that's being conveyed to this parcel. The, the, the parcel of land that that's currently a part of was uh, subject or is subject to a 1995 DEP site location permit. And we just would ask the applicant to weigh in on uh, you know, if, if they've touched base with the DEP, does such a conveyance require any, any further amendment to that site location permit? Um, that would be a question we have and haven't seen addressed. Um, so that's what we, ha we have some questions about the subdivision component. And um, so if you'd like, I can jump into the site plan issues, or do you want to take them sort of individually, Mr. Chair? Would you like me to keep going, sort of lay it all? Why don't we lay it all, all out right. and let them address it. <laughs> um, so let's see. With regards to the, the um, should, should note that the applicant, in addition to going through the plan development review process, has submitted a pre-application review. So they had received a round of comments through uh, planning staff. Tom Gurl, uh, working as the town's peer review traffic engineer in site design, looking at stormwater issues. Um, we, our comments, we, we uh, sort of gave you a hefty load of comments. And one of the principal issues and concerns that we had, and, and this was echoed in the, in the Goral um, memo, was regarding the point of access, the Payne Road point of access. Uh, there seemed to be a bunch of potential points of conflict and driver confusion that were inherent in the design. And so we know in speaking with the applicant towards the end of last week, they were looking at those issues and, and are preparing to uh, present a revised plan to the board, which we have yet to see, and I'm sure we'll hear about moving forward. Um, let's see. Um, I think I'll touch on sort of the, the bigger elements, because again, it's staff's, staff's um, where we have yet to see the DOT or DEP permit, and we've yet to see, frankly, the final design of the plan, that we don't think this is quite ready for final approval tonight. We'll sort of skip over some of our more um, detailed elements and, and sort of hit the highlights and cer certainly be w willing to circle back and, and talk about uh, other elements. But um, I think part of the master plan review process, the board and applicants spend quite a bit of time talking about the design standards and the expectations for the gas canopy, uh, the, uh, yeah, the gas pump canopy, um, where the board, through the master plan process, sort of went through your due diligence of recognizing what the plan development standards and design standards seek generally to have the gas canopies in the rear of the building, but based on a number of elements on the site and the merits of the overall coordination for the site agreed to have the uh, gas pumps out front. Um, I think there's an expectation of the architecture of those gas pumps. And, and in staff's review, um, we haven't seen that amended from when the board first reviewed it. And we continue to have concerns as to one, I, I should also mention that in not only do the design standards speak to gas pumps having pitched roofs, but it's actually within the town zoning ordinance through the performance standards. There's a requirement that uh, for there's the gasoline filling stations have certain standards, and one of them is that um, gasoline uh, canopies need to be pitched roof, um, and so we don't believe that's being met. 
Um, we also have some questions about the overall design and massing of the of the pumps that we think the board may want to consider. Um, I guess finally, um, again during the master plan deliberation, a lot of a lot of effort and discussion was given around the landscaping and buffering uh, along, particularly along Payne Road. Um, the applicant had talked about, you know, sort of staggered or layered effect of landscaping. Um, in reviewing the, the landscape plan, it, it appeared fairly linear, um, and and I guess we'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the approach that the applicant has gone with, and this may be an application where the board might want to consider the the applicant to provide a, a rendering of what it would look like to the, the traveling public from Payne Road looking onto the site, basically looking westerly uh, through the gas pumps and at the uh, convenience store, um, consistent with uh, some other applications that the applicant has sought those items for. And finally, I'll just note, at this point, we have yet to receive renderings of the uh, restaurant or the diesel pumps out back. Um, which are typical expectation of the site plan review process. Um, with that, I guess I turn it over to you, Mr. Chair, and, and certainly um, may have more as we go along. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Steve Bushy with uh, DeLuca Hoffman Associates, and I'm um, here representing uh, Priority Group and Scarborough Property Holdings. Uh, in previous meetings, Dave Latulip has been the primary voice for the project, and he sends his regrets. Uh, he was unable to make it tonight, but I do have with me uh, other members of the team. Wes Thames of Priority Group is here, and he's part of the development team of sorts and is very familiar with all of these projects. He's been involved with a number of them now. We have Mark Singleman of Alpha Architects here to provide some uh, discussion and hopefully input regarding the building architecture and the canopy architecture, as Jay has just gone over. I think we're going to have some discussion about that tonight. And uh, finally, Bill Bray from Traffic Solutions is, is here, so uh, we can uh, potentially address some of the traffic pieces, which I'll try to cover in my presentation and try to keep it brief. And uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, if you would like, uh, perhaps we can go through our pieces. I know it's getting, we're in the third or fourth item here. If you want to take your break, maybe in between, uh, I'm comfortable with that, but I'll let you determine. Right. Yeah, we'll see how the board is, sure. is going. So uh, Jay's given you a, a nice rundown of things. We have provided you now the final site plan application submission and subdivision submission. We've been before you to discuss the project a couple of times in our master planning process uh, going back to the fall and then uh, just more recently here back in uh, January or so. So we think, we hope that you've gotten a, a general context of the, the development and what we're proposing, and I'm going to go through that uh, with a number of the drawings. Uh, one of the first ones that Jay talked about was that subdivision plan, and uh, he's correct in that there was a, a number of subdivisions that were approved here, and hopefully I can capture this by standing here, and you can see my little red light. But the, the front lots here were part of an earlier 1980 subdivision piece that was part of a, a larger, broader uh, Yin property uh, that included a quite a bit larger piece, and then the development of Ginn Road, and then two lots, lots one and two here out in front. And it was at that time that there was uh, this condition about the access along Payne Road uh, being uh, reserved or not being allowed, that is, along the Payne Road uh, from the front lot that is now our site development lot. So in moving forward, you folks will uh, hopefully allow us, and as we talk about uh, our proposed access condition, uh, be willing to uh, perhaps amend that earlier approval on uh, restricted access off the of Payne Road. Then what happened uh, subsequent to that was uh, R.C. Moore and then Four Star, which is uh, an extension of R.C. Moore, also did another subdivision plan, which I believe was in 1995, and that's this broader area, and that's occupied today by the R.C. Moore uh, trucking business and so forth. So we have a couple of different subdivisions to uh, amend. One of the things we've also done, as Jay mentioned, is on the DEP side of things, this larger R.C. Moore property was granted a site location of development approval at that time that it was approved. And so we have to do an amendment to that uh, approval 
to DEP, and we have submitted that uh, amendment request, as well as doing uh, a, a transfer because our project is proposing an acquisition here, <coughs> excuse me, an acquisition of about a quarter of an acre of land in this little triangular wedge area. So that will be basically uh, uh, transferred, and there'll be a lot line adjustment. Is so this wedge becomes part of this lot one, which is our our site area. So both of those applications have been made to the DEP. They were made at the same time that we made our stormwater permit application to the DEP uh, here uh, a little over a month ago or so. So they're reviewing those, and we're uh, fully in expectation that uh, they're going to be processing that relatively uh, quickly and soon. Uh, the stormwater piece is our primary uh, development review under the DEP. We have uh, uh, our development here, which is over an acre in area, new impervious area, so it qualifies for a stormwater permit, but we're not needing a site location of development permit since we're under three acres of new impervious for our development here. So a little nuanced relative to what's being amended and modified relative to DEP approvals, uh, and then or the outlier is that we're going to get a stormwater permit from uh, the DEP for our stormwater drainage systems. That will be coupled with the review that's being done and has been done here uh, by the peer review consultants on behalf of the town as well. So we've got a little duplication of effort, but that's all good, and I think we're on the, the right path uh, in that regard. So that's the broader picture about subdivision. Ultimately, uh, we're hopeful and expecting that there will be this plan here that will be in Mylar form, and this would be the plan ultimately that would be uh, signed by the board if we are to get approval and be recorded. Uh, we've decided that it would be just a single drawing rather than having to amend a couple of subdivisions. We've talked this through with uh, the uh, surveyors who are involved. In fact, this plan is being prepared by Tipton Associates, and uh, we feel comfortable that that's, that's addressing all of it. We do have some notes that have to be on there, and I believe staff and, and Jay have made mention to that uh, uh, of the notes that need to be applied to this plan, making sure that it's cross-referencing the earlier approved drawings and so forth, uh, but we feel comfortable that, that we have taken care of that now. So that's the hopefully not too long explanation on the subdivision piece, and I can jump into uh, just a, a review now of the site plan with these couple of color graphics. Uh, Mark will be able to discuss a little bit at length the uh, architectural piece, and then we can go from there. Mr. So here's the just site plan. A point of clarification, I just want to be, so you're in rep the subdivision plat in your subsequent discussions with others you're uh, submitting is going to won't be showing the split of the subject lot because you're suggesting that that's not part of the 1995 sub I just want to be sure I I'm, I'm clear on this point. Yeah, you're, we've shown this on this particular graphic that I brought here tonight where that lot line is, okay. and I wanted to have that on there just to be able to represent that. Now, one of the things that uh, may ultimately happen relative to the developer side of things, and I'll talk about this when we look at the, the project in general. We have our sea store fuel station area here on the uh, westerly side of the lot or southerly side of the lot, and then a proposed tentative or prospective restaurant use here on the northerly side, and that is a prospective use without a definitive tenant right now. So uh, that may ultimately be decided that we would come back uh, once that tenant is uh, fixed and certain, uh, and it's likely that we would be coming back more than likely to discuss the architecture of that tenant in that building uh, with you folks. So. Uh, even though we're, we've been representing it on our plans, we want to make sure that our approval process now reflects that. But I, I suspect that uh, because we don't have a definitive tenant there and we haven't been able to show you definitive elevations, building elevations or otherwise for that particular use, that we'd probably end up coming back to you. And I think the subdivision discussion would probably take place at that same time because I, I, I'm not sure right now that this lot line is going to be the definitive line or not, depending on what that restaurant use is. So. I guess what I'm hearing is right now what you're actually seeking this board's approval for is for the lot, I can't remember if it's lot two, the lot two development, the, the, the gas station development. Right. And with basically a, a concept, a sketch of what the other lot would look like, could be, hopefully will be. <laughs> yeah, certainly um, there are, our drainage systems, for an example, are all going to be designed. And, and I guess that, that, that's the point I'm headed towards is maybe as we do prepare subsequent 
uh, plans for this board to consider. At some point, we need to parse out what is expected to be developed with this approval, recognizing that, much like we heard from you know our earlier applicant, the, the gateway, maybe something happens and it doesn't happen for years down the road. What what are the expectations for the stormwater to be built now? The, the access drives to be built now. You know, which improvements are we expecting now, and which might come with the subsequent. Uh, site plan approval, which hopefully is only months away rather than years away, but sure. we have to sort of recognize that that potential is out there. So, right. Um, yeah. When you talk about the gas station, you're talking about the convenience store also, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, well, that that would be combined. Let's settle that. Convenience store uh, fuel station is is one use, and that's uh, this use here on the southerly end of the the property. I, if I just offhand say C store or fuel store, trying to all it's all the same. Uh, so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, other if there are any other questions, here is our site plan, and uh, hopefully uh, represented here in some color to try to give you some clarity on things. And uh, the key elements again are the C store fuel area, fuel canopy out in front, which we'll talk about, and the, the restaurant area, which was represented in our, our master plan piece. Uh, here a month ago that we presented to you, we discussed the location of the Gin Road entrance and going back again to our original master plan of last fall, we had talked about entrance locations here on Gin Road being closer to Payne Road and we heard of the sensitivity and, and concern about those, so uh, we made revisions and modifications uh, along the process here and have arrived at our Gin Road entrance being a full service entrance uh, here towards the uh, far westerly side of, of the property boundary, towards the back rear corner of the property boundary. Access off of that will allow basically a circular motion around uh, the fuel area and the C store. We've got some parking out in front. We've got some parking to the sides here. We have our fueling area here, which we'll talk about and look at some of the elevations per se uh, and the views of those. Uh, here in a moment. We have uh, a drive-through piece as well, which this drive-through allows that access kind of in that counterclockwise rotation again, fairly smoothly in a uh, uh, transitional around the sea store through the canopy area. As we had talked about uh, to you folks before with the diesel islands over here, we have the area to allow the movement, circular movement for a, a larger vehicle, a semi-trailer delivery vehicle, which may not only be delivering fuel for the fuel station and the underground storage tanks, but may be getting some level of fuel off the diesel canopies. Although that's not the primary uh, customer that's being looked at for this location, more than likely the customers using the diesel islands will be the smaller box trucks, uh, more than likely. Yeah, there are a lot of large semi-trailers on Gin Road with the RC Moore development and Shaw's and so forth, but they already have their own fueling capacities uh, at those locations. So they're not expected as being the primary use for our diesel service here. So uh, the point, though, that I uh, raise relative to that circulation pattern is one to which it was uh, uh, discussed in one of the site design comments about uh, deliveries and how the, the uh, vehicles making use and making deliveries to at least the C store would be coming in out of the site and we foresee that they'll be coming in off of Gin Road more than likely using our full service access uh, with lots of width and so forth. Being able to come into the site, uh, perhaps come off to the side here, make a delivery into the uh, back side of the uh, C store or otherwise. Typically those deliveries will be as is the norm well before heavier customer hours, so early morning or, or late evening or something like that. So we feel that we have adequate room here. If we're allowing the ability for a semi-trailer truck to get around the site, certainly the uh, normal delivery vehicles will also have that ability to, to get around it and function. On the restaurant side, we have an access piece here to parking and to parking. I'll note we have 30 parking spaces for the C store, and we have 48 parking spaces, which is an uh, increase above what the code requires. And, and the case that we tried to make in our submission relative to our parking demand was that uh, at least one of the prospective tenants in, on which this particular layout is being 
uh, shown their, uh, their uh, uh, restaurant use that is in the region. They have uh, similar stores and they have parking uh, supply problems now at their current locations and they've said to us we need to have uh, at least that 48 space parking count uh, for us to, to really make it go here. So that's what we've provided and that's why we're requesting uh, some degree of increase above the code requirements. I guess alternatively what we also gave you though in our submission package was a, a brief discussion about the landscaping and I'll talk about uh, more of the landscaping with respect to the perimeters and so forth but to the point about yes we have a little bit more parking that is required but we've also tried to provide some uh, landscaping coverage and we gave you a graphic to that effect. I think the code says within the interior of the uh, parking fields the code would like to see about 15% landscape coverage and I think we provided a graphic that suggests we're at about 19%. So we feel like we're providing some level of landscaping to a certain extent to offset the fact that we've provided some more uh, or a higher number of parking spaces than what's required by code. So we've tried to support that in, in a couple of different veins. So perhaps the, the key piece here which Jay talked about and we can go back and forth. You have graphics in your package that showed uh, a right turn in, right turn out uh, entrance uh, off of Payne Road, which was slightly moved here to the north from where, uh, where it's shown on this graphic. So where my red pointer is here on the graphics that are in your package, uh, that was where our driveway was. We met with the uh, DOT and, the, and neglected to say, we also have submitted a, a traffic movement permit application with the uh, Department of Transportation. We held a scoping meeting here with the town staff and the uh, division engineer, traffic engineer, uh, Derek Olson is, is uh, or has reviewed now our traffic uh, impact study that uh, Traffic Solutions prepared and I believe the uh, town's peer review <coughs> Tom Gorl has also reviewed that, so we feel like we're in a pretty good process there and, and we met with uh, Mr. Olson from the DOT uh, last Friday to go over uh, the plans. He's gone through his review and, and is quite happy with the, the results of the analysis, uh, which principally point out that we'll need uh, um, some traffic improvements here on Payne Road, including a left-hand turn lane, but I'll get to that in, in a little bit. The primary outcome of our discussion on Friday, though, was his interest and concern and discussion about the uh, Payne Road access piece. Now, that uh, echoed some of the comments that uh, Tom Gorl had also made about access into the site and some of the elements of uh, perhaps a bit of confusion or, or uh, challenge with respect to the circulation pattern. So, Mr. Olson suggested that uh, we move our driveway here a little bit further south so that it benefits primarily this C store fuel station area and aligns kind of with this core central access piece. And it still needs to be a right turn in, right turn out condition. And by moving it somewhat southerly here, we end up addressing probably a number of, of potential issues or topics or uh, items of concern uh, as far as reviewing this from the traffic side of things. With the left-hand turn movements here into Ginn Road, we have to have a little bit of a break in an island. There's an island out here today, in fact, and there is a break roughly in this location. That's principally because there's an existing driveway that has to maintain use uh, today, and that has to move forward in the future since there's a, a a uh, occup uh, occupied residence here over in this property. So by moving this driveway here suddenly a little bit, we end up helping in that we're uh, hopefully avoiding the potential for somebody to want to turn left out of this driveway when they're supposed to be restricted to right turn exiting movements only to go south bound on, on Payne Road. And so we're getting into a situation where now we're going to be shielded though because there's going to be this island here which will help overlap and uh, avoid those left-hand turns. We're still going to have the right turn and, and as I said what you see in your packet were, had a, uh, a, a right turn lane that was coming off of Payne Road here into the site and it was uh, aligned with this driveway which is going to be a one-way driveway going from basically south to north, so vehicles will be able to go this direction and, and go into this parking area. There was some openness to this and uh, probably 
probably less fluid than it needed to be uh, in, a, in that we had this driveway. We also had the exiting lane from a drive-through for the restaurant. Here's the potential movements for drive-through uh, visitors into the restaurant, stopping here, making their pickup, but then what we're showing now is that this would come out and have a, a stop condition, which should help minimize that potential for conflict as cars are coming in and out at this location. But we also have the, the benefit here of basically the continuity of, of this main drive aisle. So taking Mr. Olson's recommendations to that, we quickly made that change and felt that, well, we need to really present that to you folks as well tonight. So I apologize for not necessarily being able to have that reflected in what you've looked at and, and reviewed here subsequent to, or prior to this meeting, but uh, we think it's a great comment. It was a great input from uh, Mr. Olson. Now, to the question, perhaps, that you're thinking, well, why hadn't we put it there earlier? Well, our alignment of that driveway roughly in this location was more or less predicated on the fact that there's a control of access condition along the Payne Road frontage here. And we were under the understanding that the control of access condition, which ended right here, and we were just going to be just to the north of it. Control of access is by the DOT, and that basically implies there's a fence there today, in fact, that you'll see um, no access wherever that fence is. and. Uh, so we were kind of following and abiding by what we understood was going to be the, the restriction there from the DOT uh, along Payne Road. And Mr. Olson, in uh, his review and discussing with others in the department, uh, concluded that they were able to allow us to effectively install a driveway and, in fact, move up and down that control of access and perhaps even into the control of access that they would be uh, amenable to that and, and didn't have any objections to that. Uh, furthermore, on the control of access piece, normally in a control of access if there's a fence, which there is there today, you would normally have to provide a, a fenced condition. And we thought, well, maybe if they're going to allow us uh, to move that driveway here into the control of access, uh, it was at first suggested, well, we'll make you continue the control of access along this side and this side with a fenced condition. So I was a little concerned about how the DOT was going to uh, rule on that, so to speak. They've come back and said, well, no, we're fine. If you remove the fence, uh, we understand you're putting landscaping there and so forth. You're not going to be able to do any other driveway conditions along your frontage, but we're willing to allow your driveway at this location. And uh, seeing as though it, in effect, probably is the best alignment and, and benefits uh, all around, uh, we're feeling pretty comfortable now and pretty happy with how this has worked out with this right turn entering and right turn exiting movement uh, for both vehicles entering into the canopy fuel area as well as those uh, coming in and then wanting to circle around and go to the, into the restaurant. Now, I'll note the, down in this area, your plans also probably reflected <coughs> slightly more narrow entrance configuration. I believe it was identified as on those plans that you've been looking at as about 14 feet wide. We had met with the fire department here uh, about a week ago or so, and they uh, had looked to, or they wanted us to provide a, a wider entrance there so that their trucks could come in, and they didn't have any have not had any issue with the radius there for them to be able to turn and come in that direction. Actually, their primary route, if they were to come in and have to service the restaurant, they're still likely to come in, turn on the Ginn Road, come around the perimeter here, either come down this point or completely around the perimeter, but they will want to be able to gain access to the front of the restaurant and then come in this direction. Well, the width that we had here at 14 feet wasn't going to allow them to be able to potentially stop their fire truck and put out the outriggers to be able to then serve if there was a fire or something in the restaurant. So they said, we want a minimum 20 feet around there. Normally we have 24-foot drive aisles here, so it's not normally a problem in our parking areas because we have a wide enough drive aisle. So we widen that out on this particular graphic. And again, that's a piece that is new to you, and I realize that, but wanted to be able to uh, show you that that's where we're at and how that blends in and, and seems to work fairly well with uh, the new entrance config uh, configuration here off of Payne Road. So that 
uh, as well as the, the other comment that the fire department gave us was that this particular module of, of uh, parking area here was set back a certain distance from this side of the building because we had a, a wider sidewalk area up against the building. They wanted to be a certain distance from the building and so we uh, modified this by a few feet so that their minimum distance that they are from the building with their fire truck when they park in here will be up against that building. <coughs> At least as it's represented here. <coughs> Again, back to the whole, may we likely be back before you on the restaurant piece, perhaps because this footprint may not be the ultimate restaurant footprint. Uh, but we think it's it's pretty close right now and, and certainly gives us uh, lots of latitude and we want to make sure that we're, we're workable with what all of the parameters that the city staff and emergency services folks have. So uh, we feel good about the, these changes now that, w that we've made in this particular area. So uh, a couple of the other items that were raised by uh, Mr. Olson and are reflected, and I think both in the plans that you have and, and in these drawings, about exiting uh, relief points, so to speak, with uh, the drive-through conditions. We have a drive-through and we'll have a queue. And you know how it works. Uh, you get into the queue sometimes and you just say, oh, I got to go. I can't, I don't want to wait uh, another two minutes to get my coffee. Uh, I got to get out of here. So we provided a little relief point here and we did the same thing over in, on this uh, particular location. So if you started in the queue and you got backed up a little bit, you wanted a point to be able to get out, uh, we provided both of those. There was another comment that Mr. Olson made and that was in regards to vehicles that might come in and want to park here. Well, they come in and, oh, lo and behold, all the parking spaces are full. And how do they turn around since this is a one-way this direction? Uh, we gave some space here uh, for them to be able to turn around and we'll have to sign that with, you know, a no parking piece, but at least they'd be able to pull in, turn around, and perhaps seek some parking over here. Um, a little bit of a, a relief point there, and that was a, to a comment from, from Mr. Olson. Site plan here on the improvements, again, I'll just touch uh, upon these. We've got a pretty broad number of lanes here in, in both directions. Uh, so northbound today there's two lanes and this proposal is looking to add a third lane for that left-hand turn movement into Ginn Road. The traffic impact study or analysis shows that we don't meet any warrants for a traffic signal, so we're not proposing a traffic signal at this location, which I think by all accounts from staff and others is uh, welcome. Uh, we don't need to have a, another traffic signal. We have a fully signalized intersection here at Highgus and, and the Turnpike, so uh, that should be that should be fine. Um, what one of the things we will provide, though, is the ability or to, to install signals in the future and, and when we do our uh, some widening here and improvements we're going to install conduits across Ginn Road to be able to uh, pull future cables and so forth since it will be uh, in the road we might as well do that particular pieces of work since those are kind of small small beans but uh, pretty important in the future if there's uh, some activity let's say because of the rezoning and so forth that were to take place along Ginn Road that might be a little bit more traffic intensive uh, and require a, a traffic signal. On the uh, southbound side here, uh, the alignment of uh, the lanes, we have uh, left-hand turn lane to turn left onto Hygis, then we have the two through lanes and the right turn lane. Uh, we've got those because of our left-hand turn lane being slightly shifted, so our drawings show the uh, prospect here and when we do final design on the off-site roadway improvements, the typical process will be on the off-site roadway uh, designs, we have to get our traffic movement permit first and then we'll go through a developer state agreement and then actually submit off-site road improvement designs to the DOT. So that lags the process a little bit, but that's a piece that is handled directly through the DOT. But we've uh, contemplated the idea that we're probably going to need a little bit of right-of-way along the, the, the project frontage here for perhaps a little bit of road widening along the Payne Road frontage. So that's what we've tried to capture here, at least graphically, that uh, there would be a small width of frontage along Payne Road that would be transferred to the uh, DOT and, and put back into the right-of-way. So. I raise that because it, it goes to a couple of the comments on the landscaping, which I'll talk about in, in a moment. 
We provided uh, on our site plan sets, uh, grading drainage plans, which I, I have here in black and white. If we need to get into that, we can, we can talk about that. But the, the general gist of everything here is that we have a surface drainage system that will include a number of catch basins and pipes and so forth that will capture all of our stormwater. Because we're in a stormwater permit situation, we have to provide the water quality treatment in accordance with the Chapter 500 standards, which I'm sure you folks have heard about, and as well as the local standards. And uh, our design right now meets all of that with 95% treatment of our impervious surfaces and over 80% treatment of our developed area. We're providing a uh, underdrain soil filter which has become more or less one of the common treatments. It's uh, an above ground area. We drain everything through pipes, discharges over to the topmost section here of the underdrain soil filter. We have a whole series of underdrains beneath here with a soil filter media that will be installed. It has to have lots of maintenance and, and so forth over the course of its lifetime, but uh, we've provided measures and, and provisions for all of that within our submissions to both the uh, DEP as well as the town. And then it will discharge stormwater. There's existing culverts today over in this corner, so we meet all of the, the standards relative to uh, uh, flooding standards and, and so forth. So we feel like we've addressed that aspect of the project's uh, requirements uh, pretty fully. Other utilities include water and sewer, which we have water and sewer both in Payne Road and Ginn Road. The C-Store fuel station will be serviced with water and sewer off of Payne Road, effectively coming up through the driveway here and servicing into the building. The uh, proposed restaurant here, based on our discussions with the Scarborough Sanitary District, to whom we're going to be uh, uh, appearing before them and the, the trustees for approval here at uh, probably, I think it's next week for approval. And, and right now I have a draft uh, approval letter from David Hughes, the uh, uh, um, the superintendent at the district, and so we feel pretty good there. But one of the outcomes of their review was that uh, our sanitary sewer and water for the restaurant will go out to Ginn Road. We're going to have a separate standalone sewer line that goes out to, to Ginn Road for this. One curious element, though, of uh, our utility piece is in the acquisition of this little triangular wedge from the Four Star property. Four Star has a building right here. They have a subsurface wastewater disposal system, a leach field, right here. And they do not want to lose the ability since <coughs> we're taking the land here, which they were looking at as the potential for them to move or expand their field in the future if they were to expand their building. They've lost that opportunity now. So the agreement is uh, with the acquisition of this triangular wedge, we're going to end up installing a sanitary sewer, which is probably in the end result all good because we're going to get rid of their subsurface disposal field here, simply tie them in off into the district system, and so you have a new, new, new user. Now, their flows are modest at best, less than 100 gallons a day, so it, it's nothing uh, other than uh, a little bit of an expense, certainly, to extend a, a six-inch sewer line out along our uh, rear property boundary here out to uh, Ginn Road, but that is part of our proposal as well. So the district has said, yep, yeah, we're, we're fine with that. We're going to be providing an easement for that uh, sewer line to cross the property. So we've also provided lighting plans, and uh, the lighting plans reflect, I believe, it's 14 20-foot tall uh, fixtures, uh, all of which... Uh, show uh, minimal um, uh, light uh, spillover at any of the property boundaries, recognizing we're not in a, a residential area at all. We are in the, the B3 zone. So uh, the 20-foot fixtures, as I understand it, meet the city code, so we feel, or town codes, excuse me, uh, we feel pretty good about all of that. We provided you the, the lighting coverages, though, both the uh, I believe the plans are identified as an on-canopy and off-canopy type uh, scenario, and, and perhaps Wes might be able to address uh, off-canopy, what, you know, what the hours are, if that's uh, late evening hours when the canopy maybe is off, but I, I'm not sure about that. We can get to that uh, in a little bit. So I know that there had been some discussion or at least a point made by uh, staff about those plans. Um, they are what they are in terms of the, the numbering and the uh, rep graphical representation, I apologize if they're difficult to read. 
Uh, I think we provided you 24 by 36 inch sheet sizes uh, so that you could at least best try to read the, the scale and, and the numbers. And uh, on those sheets, they give you uh, the number of fixtures and their locations and so forth. So uh, we gave you the uh, catalog cuts for those uh, LED fixtures as well. So hopefully we've we've uh, met that. But if we have some discussion about that, that that's fine too. So I'll try to. To Mark, and here's the landscaping plan. So, again, here's another situation where we had some comment. We got the comments from the staff. Your packages reflect, as Jay had said, uh, a landscaping layout here, particularly along Payne Road, that was perhaps uh, linear. We've worked with a, a landscape ar architect, uh, Tony Minch, uh, for the layout of all of our plant material and so forth, and he understood, uh, as did we, about uh, some of the I guess concerns from uh, staff and, and from you folks during our earlier discussions and, and some of the things that we've tried to treat here. So just in these last few days, having heard the comment from staff about the uh, perhaps the need for some layering, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge because we're, we're narrow here along our frontage, certainly. We don't have a lot of space there. We're trying to provide some room for one spillover of, of snow in, in that winter period when uh, the plows are going to be coming down here, and we need to have some space for snow to be piled up. Then, as well, though, we're trying to provide a berm, which our grading plans do reflect, and I had included in the package at least some black and whites of a, a couple of cross sections through the site in two locations to give you, hopefully, some subtle representation of uh, the berm and what the landscaping was going to do and its buffering effect for uh, view through the canopy area and, and into the building spaces. Having heard about the layering piece, though, and, and what we had here was a, a series of larger deciduous trees, pin oaks, and then we had some smaller shrubs that were going to be planted. And they were fashioned graphically in our plan, probably a little bit more linear and without some depth to them. And, and so what we mentioned to our landscape architect, do we have room here to try to do layering in the sense of we've got a little bit of a, uh, a mound here, we've got a berm, we've got some height, uh, perhaps within the midway section of that roughly three foot tall berm, we can have one piece of planting material and then on top of it another piece of planting material. And so what he's come back with here and in, in, uh, what I'm representing to you and I know it's hard to see, but is uh, our attempt at trying to achieve that layering effect uh, to a certain extent. So we still have our taller trees uh, beginning over here in the corner, and then we've got a number here, so we have, I think, a, a total of six here, at least on this piece of frontage, and we have some more along the restaurant piece. But we also have, and, and perhaps when we do have a break, if we have one, if you want to take a look at this, you can see that a little bit more closely, that we're, uh, what we feel, is making a pretty bold attempt here at trying to give a little bit of layering. So but that's not in our plan. Correct. So again, I apologize for that, but it's uh, in the sense of, well, we've heard the comment, let's talk about it then, and at least give something for you to, to look at and show that we're making a, a good effort here and trying to uh, uh, meet the, the staff's concerns and perhaps yours as well. So that, I think, was probably one of the, the key elements to the landscape uh, items. As I said earlier, we, we provided landscaping around the perimeter here, and we provided a, a graphic that tried to show uh, roughly that 19% landscaping coverage with how we understand, and it's maybe not 100% clear, how that standard is supposed to be uh, interpreted or otherwise measured within the parking lot. So we gave the graphic and said, okay, this is how we would do it based on our understanding of how it's supposed to be done, and we come up with roughly 19% coverage. So, okay, that, I felt pretty good about that. Uh, that we were meeting that standard again. Perhaps to, to one final element of the landscaping piece, and that is along this side. Main Turnpike Authority has, uh, I'll say, 60 to 80 feet of existing vegetation here between the paved piece here of the ramp and then up to our uh, piece. And you don't see it today, but uh, through the trees there is the fence line that's associated with uh, their control of access along this piece of frontage. 
staff has talked about the idea of maybe some additional landscaping along here. Now, we don't have a lot of room with our stormwater management area. In fact, we're actually putting in a short little wall to get, a, to get as much volume as I can in the uh, basin. Uh, so we don't have a lot of space between what's going to be the top of our short little wall in our stormwater management facility and our property boundary. But to uh, staff's concern about if in the future MTA were to go in here and clear that area, we, it would be relatively open. Now, that's perhaps not as bad a thing relative to visibility, but right now you can't see too much. I guess our thought is if we needed to supply some buffering in here in the future, absent or as a result of this being cleared out, I think we would be amenable to a condition of approval to that effect that we would go back in there and plan something as well. Because, yes, it would probably would be fairly open and broad at that point in time, and I think it would be in everybody's best interest to have a little bit of landscaping along here. But in the current condition, and is as likely to remain, right now it is pretty heavily vegetated here, so even planting a couple of trees over here is not going to do uh, a lot in the short term or in the current condition. So maybe a condition there for your consideration might be the a possible approach to that. So <coughs> those are the elements of um, my primary in a pr presentation here. I know we're probably going to have some dialogue, a uh, number of questions, but I want to really segue into Mark going into the building pieces and the canopy uh, elements so we can kind of keep pushing things along. Is staff comfortable, or is the, uh, the board comfortable okay. with where they are right now? Do they want to take a short break, or? Uh, a few minutes. A few minutes? Yeah. All right. My means to get a little. Uh, Mark Singleton, Alpha Architects. Um, we're back before you tonight. Um, to, no, um, to look at the architecture of the buildings and the canopies in your packet, you had these two color photographs of two of our other uh, projects that we're quite proud of. Uh, this one here is in Hollis. You can see this as the canopy out in front, and this one here is in uh, Topsom. Um, you can see the, uh, the way that there's a blend of materials, there's a blend of colors, there's deeply pitched roofs with an accent cupola on the top. Um, nice little vent elements up at the top of the gable to break that up a little bit. Um, these are, there, there are coolers and um, elements inside the building where we can't really have windows. So we use these panels and an awning element sometimes to, to break that up. And we've done some of that here on this building. Um, these plans have not changed much since you've seen them last, but we did add one of these panel elements um, that, that would look very similar to what you're seeing here um, on the buildings. Um, with regard to the canopy, we, we, our goal is to keep the architecture of the canopy fairly light if possible. Um, we want to be able to see through the canopy to the architecture, uh, which um, my clients are very happy with this style of architecture, and, and that's our goal, is to keep it light. Um, and one of the things that uh, staff made a comment about was uh, the, the spacing here between the columns. Um, the reason that it's spaced this way, we have basically parking and a drive aisle and parking. And that's so that when someone pulls into the pump or someone pulls in behind them, that they don't have to back out into traffic so that they've got really an escape lane in the middle, and it helps um, traffic flow through. So as, as you pull in and, and you come through, everybody can kind of pull through toward the, the convenience store beyond, and I think those of us who have used convenience stores will understand that, that sort of um, circulation, uh, if you will. Um, with regard to the architecture of the canopy, we do have a, a pitched roof on it, um, and Again, we're, our goal is to try to keep it light and 
uh, supportive of the architecture of the building uh, behind it, but not to dominate it. So, um, okay. Um, as far as um, uh, the colors, uh, I think you'll you'll find that this is this is a nice blend of of colors and fabrics, um, and that uh, it's really going to be a, a, an asset to uh, the town in that area. Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one thing uh, to a point that Mark has uh, mentioned and to a staff comment about uh, spacing on the, the uh, dispenser islands and so forth. So talking with uh, not only the developer here as well as the operators of these facilities and, and looking at industry standard and, and code and, and so forth. In that canopy area, we have the six dispenser islands here lined up and the spacing of those is such that really it's important to understand you've got a couple of vehicles here. One of the things that we're trying to accommodate, perhaps otherwise avoid, is if you have both users are here and then uh, let's say they're on the inside and then somebody wants to pull out and be able to get around the, the other fueling uh, patron here. Rather than having them have to back out into, let's say, this drive aisle or otherwise back out into this drive aisle, what we're trying to accomplish by this spacing, and this is the way it's explained to me, I think, and, and it all makes sense because I go into the gas station, as does everybody, often enough that you have to you have to have that ability for that vehicle on this side of the pumps, let's say, to be able to just pull out and move forward to be able to exit the canopy area. And we're trying to avoid. Now, I'm not saying that people don't back up, but you're trying to give them enough room so that they don't have to on the routine type basis. Uh, so that's kind of what gives you that spacing and how you arrive at that. So there's some certainly method to how that's arrived at and to the maybe suggestion or, or at least comment about the potential of reducing that, the response generally that I've getting from the people who operate these is that, no, that's really what we need to have and what we need to provide uh, for good common practice and, and safety uh, for this type of setup for the fuel areas with this kind of six-way multiple uh, dispenser uh, island configuration. So I wanted to address that and I hadn't really touched upon it when I, when I gave the explanation earlier on, but I think that was as far as the site elements and circulation, which I know we've had a lot of discussion about it. and. Uh, earlier discussions kind of <coughs> circled around some concerns about uh, circulation and access and, and so forth. I think we've come a long way and we think we're in pretty good shape here. We, we feel pretty happy about how things play out on this site with these two uh, uses and uh, their access conditions. Uh, it's taken a little bit, but I think we've, we've hopefully gotten it. So um, with that, I guess I would turn it back to the board. Unless Wes would like to address. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wes, Thames Priority Group. Um, we have as a, we have six of these now, and um, we're quite proud of them. Uh, they're, they're very beautiful buildings. Um, they're not your typical convenience store, what we call in the industry a C-store. Um, we really look at main architecture and, and try to make it look like it's supposed to be in Maine, even though I got a little accent that doesn't really land here. But um, one of the things that, um, in reading the planner's comments, um, we really, when you drive up and view our station, we really want to have it, the architecture pop, you know, where it really looks good. You, we, spend, we spend the time to put the awning on the front of the store. And with Mark's and, and um, Steve's uh, drawing there that shows the canopy in front of the store, we want you to be able to look through that canopy and see the architecture of the store. We really don't. We we really push towards not making the canopy the full vocal point when you drive up to our gas station. We want you to look at our building and, and see our building. I want you, we want you to look at that primarily and really look through that canopy. And so uh, our our last gas station that we did, we uh, provided the um, 
It's actually a mansard. This is a mansard type roof. It's a hip roof on all four corners, sloped, six on twelve, and it. And we had never had one before. Looks really good. Gives access to be able to to um, service our fire suppression system very easily, and um, it doesn't carry all the way to a peak. It's got the look and feel of a hip sloped roof, pitch roof, and um, and so again, by keeping that down, you're able to see the uh, see the architectural features of the store in the back. And so that that's really my instance of standing up here is just to really push forward and looking at the building and not really paying attention to the get to the canopy. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, break. I think we do need to take a brief pause here. Uh, come back at seven. Oh, excuse me, nine thirty-five. I'm looking at the seven.
Yes, we are. Um, I'm going to turn this over to the board at this point and public comment. Public, public comment. comment. Yeah, you, got that, uh, you got that little mark. I apologize. Comment. Public comment. Thank you, John. I thought I'd gotten through all of them this evening. <laughs> if there's anyone here who would like to make public comment on this item, please step up to the microphone and do so now. <coughs> Seeing nobody rushing up, I am going to now turn this over to the board. And look for someone to start. Okay. Ready? Thank you, Jeff. Steve, the exit for the restaurant, the drive up, you go out to the end, is that going to be a right turn only? Or are you going to let them go both ways? Because if you're going to let them go both ways, you think you're going to have a problem with your other exiting. That's right. Are you talking this one right here? Yes. This is uh, only one way. So one way of this direction. No, the other one. Coming out of this the restaurant. Here. You're you're convenient right there. Yep. Is that going to be right turn only, or is that going to be both ways, both right and left? We were planning on having it both right and left. And perhaps you're looking at this potential movement as an entering vehicle here. Uh, I guess we're looking at this is a stop condition. Here, so they'd have to stop and see if. And on the other side, coming from the gas lanes, is a stop sign there. Correct. Okay. I just, I just somehow see that as quagmire. But if you got stop signs everywhere, then that was that was my one comment. Um, landscaping. I mean, I. You know, we're, I just, I see us as we're, we're, we're too early in the process to get to too many fine details without working through traffic and permits, but I, looking at your landscaping plan, I mean, yes, you've got more than what you need. Um, not knowing who the <coughs> occupant is going to be of the restaurant typically dictates how how you line and, and, and the other features for that so I can understand you need to be have, have a little bit of flexibility there. The convenience store um, in your representation that you had here is that going to be the typical coloring? Is it a shell gas station versus a mobile versus a et cetera gas station? No, that's that's the uh, vendor that will be operating it. So, um, and the roof looks like it's semi-pitched around the corners, so that it will it will drain from what I could see, which is I know a, a requirement for us over the gas pumps. I guess at this point, is that correct? Uh, I guess the requirement for a pitched roof is more in the design element. Um, it's in the performance standards. They talk about having gas canopies shall be a pitched roof, which uh, aligns with what the design standards call for. So I think what what's envisioned and what's demonstrated is a, a, a full, deep pitched roof. So we're talking this versus a half. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess as as one of the um, as a source spoke to. Uh, it's not staff's interpretation that this would be considered a pitch roof. Okay. Talking on the about the canopy, right? The canopy, yeah. correct. I mean, uh, to look at it, I see a flat roof with hips on the on the ends, rather than a pitched roof. So, uh, I guess that's something that's going to have to be addressed. I understand shells colors are yellow and, and red, and I don't see how you get out around the brand coloring because they know color rendering can be an issue, but you know, I mean, shell is shell, yellow and red is yellow and red. So I don't see how you change the brand marking for that. I would say if you could limit the brand coloring as much as possible so that it doesn't yeah. stand out, but I know that that's typically gonna be an issue when we take a look at 
red room sleeve <coughs> area. You want me to speak to that? <laughs> you sure can. Mm. If I don't bring it up, I know it's going to come up along the way. And, and I'd love to say that we, as a, oh as a okay. temp, we as a owner, we actually just branded a station in Thompson, Shell Station, and we have absolutely zero control over Shell. And you have the same with Irving. You have the same with Sitco. I mean, the, uh, their branding, I literally have to go out and there's a certain height of the gray color on the poles and the canopy. I have to match every one of their specific paint colors to the T or else we don't get branding. I mean, it, it, and that's the way it is not only with Shell. I that's with Irving. That's with the Sitco. That's with the Golf. I, I understand your concern. I'm just... I'm just bringing it up, okay? Before, yeah. Before that, branding is branding. Um, Could I just ask a point of clarification? Just yeah. It, where do you see the the coloring being issued on the building or the sign? I, I just a little at, at this point I'm unclear. Are you talking about? Are you concerned with what the the, the signs being coordinated? Because the building is. I don't. I don't. I don't. Colonial, I don't, colonial Main. I, I, right. I don't. I don't have an issue with the building. Um, I know that we've raised concerns about canopies in the past and color rendering and, and all okay. of that. So I'm just saying that um, it's a shell station. It's going to be yellow and orange, and it's going to no, have. I mean, I'm not going to buy those external features. So you're talking about the branding around the canopy yeah. itself. That's that's what I wasn't yeah. clear on where where you're. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't have an issue. I'm just saying I understand it's your gotcha. your logoing, and that's what's going to be on there, and that's what Shell's colors are. I don't have a problem. Okay. I'm making that clear. And I, and and I I just would love to say that in any community we go in, we would love to say, oh, yeah, we can change okay. that to this, but when it comes down to branding, it just doesn't I, happen. I understand that. All right. Mm -hmm. um, the building features, I mean, it, it's it's typical colonial. Um, I think it looks attractive if that's what your final proposal is going to look like. Um, you're going to have to do something with the roof for the shell station because we want this versus that, which which is going to probably be an issue. Um, beyond that, you know, I mean, you I think the basic concept is fine. You've reworked the traffic patterns. You're waiting for permits. I know you've got some land issues that you've got to deal with and making sure that they're all everywhere. But I think overall it's much better than what was originally presented, and the traffic flows and patterns are better from what you've originally presented. Um, I'll be curious to see. I know that we've got issues around the pumps and how that's going to look for final, final appearance and configuration. But it's also at the back of the building and not going to be highly visible. Are you talking about the diesel canopy? Yes. The diesel canopy. What we would envision, since it's on the back side of the building where it's not visible from the roadway, the front of the building, and the side of the building that's already screened from the turnpike, we would envision a regular standard canopy. Um, and not one that, that has a peak on it at all. I mean, that would be our preference. Okay. Staff, is that going to be an issue? Or or does that canopy need to be also have a... I'll, I'll point back to the zoning ordinance, which speaks to uh, canopies having pitch roots. Uh, our issue here is that if it's a design item, in terms of our design standards, we have flexibility as a board. As a zoning ordinance, we do not. That's right. And, and, would I, and I would beg to ask just, is that design with the pitch roof a zoning standard? That's a, a zoning, zoning standard. Zoning That's standard. the issue that we have here. Okay. We're, we're faced with a zoning standard, not just a design standard. Mm -hmm. So for and it's very specific regarding refueling stations. So, I mean, it's... Uh, I, I mean, I just have to ask. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. And that's but the clarification that's point that I wanted you to know, that right. we, you know that up front. It's got to be a pitched roof, okay? okay? That's where I was yeah. leading. E exactly. So, I mean, this is a, I would assume it would be a zoning board issue otherwise, right? 
Yes, certainly this board has no authority we, over it, and we, I have we do not review yet. if the ZBA would have right. the ability to grant a waiver could of variance I, on that. Could I just ask, just for a point of clarification, what the exact language is for a pitch roof, what the definition is? I, I'm sure staff will provide that for okay. you. Okay. I mean, that would, I mean, not to argue the point, I just... I you know, understand. Understand that you've got to do whatever you've got to do behind your scenes. Yes. So. I, I just want to make that clarification of point. Is well, and, and we want we want to work with the town of Scarborough. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's just I, I have to I have to try to do what I have to do to build what I need to build to get my tenant in the building. Exactly. So. Exactly. Would you be so kind, sir, as to spell your last name for us? We're, we're not sure that we have that. Thames. T h a m e s. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I think I've done enough damage at this point, so I'll, I'll pass it on to my colleagues. All right. I'd like to just follow Ron? up on that. In, in addition to the pitch, according to what I understand, Jay, uh, the, there's also the code requirements for the spacing of the pumps. Is that correct? Uh, no, not. Uh, I guess that was a question I had in my comments. So my original round of comments sort of spoke to the scale and massing of the of the pumps, particularly as the applicant has just indicated. It looked to me that there was a a travel lane. You know, there's about 30 feet of width between the gas pumps, um, and and so I just sort of questioned the scale and massing. As I said, again, given that this item has been through plan development and the board has veered um, and allowed for the canopies to be out front, sort of bent on that item, you know, is there a way to minimize the view of the canopy as the applicant has already indicated that we're hoped to do so that the building popped. Um, so my comment, and, and in response to that, the applicant's response was something to the effect of for industry standard and code requirements, we need spacing, and it, it just wasn't clear what is the code requirement for spacing. It is 30 feet the code requirement? I would. I don't think it is, given the number of gas pumps that I go to. But, there, but maybe that is. I've, it, so that was the question I had, because um, that would be more of a state fire marshal type code requirement than a local zoning standard. We certainly don't have anything in our zoning regs about pump separation. So okay. that, that was that was where that comment came from. I, I know that. What he's referring to, they physically do, for example, at Sam's. Maybe you could see what that spacing is on their side. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's 30 feet. It's I, I don't yeah. think it's 30 feet. No. But mm -hmm. uh, I just know that that's the exact same premise that they use there. So. Okay. And and I, uh, you know, getting back to the branding, uh, I. You know, the <laughs> blending the, the building with the branding of the shell station as much as you can so that it doesn't look like a mishmash. I don't know how, you know, how well you can do that. But, And I'd like to get back to uh, uh, what Jeff was said about the quagmire, which I asked you during break as far as the flow of traffic is concerned. Can you go back to that for me, please? There's, there's two entrances off of Payne Road, correct? One going into the restaurant, one going to uh, the convenience store. One right lane there, here. Yeah, right there. There's two in, right? Yes, you could turn two right in. or you could turn left. Okay. What was that, the up ahead, straight ahead that you said was uh, right there? Because my, my impression was you can go in, and take a right to go to the restaurant, or go in and take a left, and that uh, when it, they came out, they all came out the same exit. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, but well what's that little space you, you were talking with Jeff above that? Just just right there. Right there. That's yeah. the exit lane for the drive-through for the restaurant. Okay, so so again, then where do those people go when they get down there? They can go out either either entrance. Yes, they would stop here. They would have a stop control here to be able to view any traffic going up and down this direction. Stop here, they can turn right to go out, and let's say they're going to go northbound on Payne Road. That's the only way, and we'll have that signed for northbound because you can't take a left out of here. To go northbound, you have to come out this intersection. Okay, what if they, what if they, so if they want to go south, which way are they going to go? They could take a left here to go to this lane and then take a right out. So I was happy with what you had told me earlier, but now I'm getting back in my own mind to that 
quagmire, and it, and, it, and it all boils down to the drive-through of the restaurant. That that uh, I was happy with the fact that both the restaurant, forget the drive-through for a moment, and the convenience store had to go out the same exit, so that there wouldn't be a, a bumper car type situation. But you add that third component, which is the drive-through of the uh, restaurant. And those people have an option of going either way. Uh, and, you know, I, I would really have to see a lot of signage there, stoppage, or, you know, because that concern, that little point concerns me. The rest of it I'm happy with, but that little point there as far as everybody merging. Um, okay, that's enough about that. Um, right. <coughs> The people that you're buying the little triangles from, what kind of operation do they have? You said that they, they do something. Uh, that's four-star, and I believe this building that's right in here is a warehouse, but I, I can't tell you and any they, more beyond that. Do they that. come in through Gin Road? Yeah, they come through uh, Gin Road over on this side. Okay. Um, and I know you got to get your... Uh, the DOT involved with Payne Road, is that correct? Right. Okay, so we got to wait for you to, to get that. Um, and I'm not concerned about the main uh, Turnpike Association removing uh, the, the roughage they have on their side right now. I'm not, that's okay. Um, and we're going to get some more information on subdivision, is that way? Yeah, I think we'll have some continuing discussion about that, but it sounds like the applicants made some note revisions on that. Um, and signage. Nobody has brought up signage. There was some concern by staff about signage that would need to be, I think, revised from what you originally proposed. And so we'll expect to see that difference. <coughs> I think that's about all I've got for the time. Maybe you answered the other questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are you referring to? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, right, thank you. If I could just for a second on the signage piece, since you just raised it, because I apologize for not necessarily talking about that. We're going to have two pylon signs that will be individual signs for each use. I know there's a distinction within the ordinance, and if you're going to have a business directory, directory sign, sign which right. these would not be. They would just be a standalone pylon sign, which I understand the ordinance does allow as for each use, one sign. We have one located in here and one up here. Now, this one here is what was represented in our application package for the illustration signs, and it was pointed out to us relative to the coloration and so forth. And uh, as best as I know right now, the applicant has the intentions of simply meeting the sign ordinance relative to dimensional, and, and I think what we had provided you, uh, at least for illustration, showed a sign that was less than 100 square feet in size, so meet that standard. Dimensionally, on the plan we provided you, I think it had a dimension of 17 feet high, and the standard is 16 feet, and so we would be providing signs certainly that would meet 16 feet, and that was just intended on giving you an indication of what that sign for the C store at this location would be looking like. Uh, without a tenant here, certainly we don't have, uh, I can't find anything yet on what their sign is other than where its location is in, intended on being, and that's just up in this corner. So that's that's kind of where we're at there, and it does address uh, a staff comment about <coughs> were we providing business directory signs or just a standard pylon sign for each use, and it'll be the latter. Thank you. Okay. Carrie? Thank you. Um, I'm just a little bit confused um, on the materials that are going to be used for the canopy for the gas station. Is it going to look exactly like that and be the usual plastic and, and metal, or are you going to have similar materials on the canopy that you have on the convenience store? What, what we would typically use for the, for the canopy is what you see there, and then add the pitch roof to the top of it. It would be. You want to grab the mic. Not used to having to hear one of these things. It's on the bottom. You good? It's on. Um, this uh, canopy right here is basically the same canopy as this. 
this lower portion of it right here. And then what you would end up doing on the top is peek up, peek down. And so you would still have the same shell facade. Um, it's metal, it's not plastic. Um, this is a, um, for ex externally lit purposes, the red light, the red band, is a light that lights up to the yellow. The yellow is not lit. The light is actually behind the red. The red is lit up from that light, but it casts light onto the yellow. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it's lit up. And so then your two shell emblems are backlit shell emblems. Um, and would they be the same size ratio um, that's shown on there, or would they actually look like the picture? They would look like this. This is a little bit off, but I mean, it's um, these signs here are roughly about three and a half by three and a half. And would the pitched roof materials match the pitched roof materials on of the, the building? Yes, it's a standard. Um, what they end up doing for these canopies, there's a metal frame that's built in the back, which this might end up being a roof, roof truss scenario. We'd have to get it designed. One of the only issues with the pitched roof enclosure is servicing the and, and I actually, on the way over here, I did drive by the Cumberland Farms down on the corner of Gorham Road and Payne Road just to look and see what they had. But the real issue with that is servicing the units that's on top of the canopy, the fire suppression system, because you end up installing them. And if you ever, the, the um, UL rated bottles are around 300 pounds apiece. So getting those bottles out and back in over the time of servicing is the, one of the real issues with the pitched, completely closed in roof where we would wanted to go with the mansard so you could readily available a crane to lift them in, lift them out. And so, but we'll get back to that. Any uh, other questions? That's fine, thank you. Um, <coughs> the branding um, issue, I understand from your perspective, but this is exactly why I liked the ordinance and the design standards for this area that we would not have that kind of um, uh, structure right on um, Payne Road. Um, I really would rather see those in the back. Um, I know I'm going to lose um, that issue, but this is exactly why I think they should be in back um, of the building. I definitely would like the diesels to, to match. I don't think just because it's behind the building that we shouldn't adhere to the design and ordinance standards on that either. Um, I do understand and totally agree with the spacing of the pumps. I am, um, I buy my gas at Sam's and I do understand the safety and traffic issues and especially because they're out front and they're very close to, what did you call it, Mr. Mazur, the, um, the area where the traffic is all going to come together? Quagmire. Quagmire, yes. Um, having the ability to get away from those pumps because it's so close to the quagmire um, I think is going to be helpful. So I, I totally agree and understand with that, but I definitely would rather see those um, in the back as our design ordinance standards discuss. Um, I do like, you know, the basic architecture of the building itself. Um, my one question is, do they, when they get the vendor for the restaurant, do they, ha they have to come back for um, design? Okay. Um, was there... I do agree that, you know, eventually the layering, additional layering on the landscaping would be great. Um, I think everything else is going to be answered with uh, the DOT permits that come through. So that's all I have. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Dave? Thank you. First of all, Steve, I want to commend you and your team on the improvement that you've made to the uh, project. Uh, I think it's a big improvement over the first one that we saw. Um, you've uh, obviously put a lot of thought into it. I like the building. It's a nice design. Uh, I think it will be attractive. Uh, can, can I see the site plan? The major issue I have is with that new entrance exit. 
Uh, I like it better than <clears throat> than the one you had before, but I still have some problems with this. Uh, it seems like there's going to be a lot of congestion here uh, with the in and out of traffic, and also uh, with traffic going out and coming in from Payne Road. Uh, first of all, I don't I don't agree with that long left turn lane uh, going north. Uh, I can see people instead of instead of waiting in line or waiting to turn onto Gin Road, I can see them crossing that break in the island and jumping across the lanes to get into that front entrance, which I think will be um, uh, a hazard. Uh, I'd rather see I'd rather see that island which starts at Hagus extend all the way to that break and then have a turning lane, a shorter turning lane. Uh, I think that would eliminate that possibility of, you see what I'm saying? So we have our left hand turn and graphically we're representing it right now Right. from here. Uh, beyond and, and this is a raised island condition that right. we do have bringing up to here So we try to get that so it was just beyond here to stop that uh, As a plan we we need to have that little opening in it though to keep this right. Yeah, I understand way. that but, so. but someone getting into that lane way back at the beginning right will see that break and be tempted to just cut across there well and that, that's a good point. In fact, I talked to uh, Bill here, uh, Bray, earlier about that left-hand turn. And what we have here graphically represented is, is longer in terms of queue length than in what is required from the traffic study. And so Bill's suggestion was to reduce this length down. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, I think, is going to what you're suggesting and that is that that left-hand turn lane is probably going to actually begin somewhere up in here. It won't be this long distance that somebody can get into the left-hand turn, and then by the time they get up to here, might feel compelled right. to want to take an early left yeah. when they shouldn't be. Right. And so I think to the suggestion that Bill has made to us here, and that is we don't need all of this length. We can get this so that this taper transition to get into the left-hand turn could be moved up here a little bit, and maybe that's addressing. I I, I would your suggest uh, extending it all the way to the break. Yeah, I'm not sure that we have enough room for that. I'm looking to Bill, and he's shaking no. We, I, I'm <clears throat> guessing based on the numbers he's given to me, we're probably somewhere in this zone right in here uh, okay. for what we need for Q length. Recognizing that. All right, we'll we'll compromise. <laughs> <laughs> One of the items I'll, I'll point out for that left-hand turn is that is the trucks that are turning into here. Okay. You only need a couple of the trucks and they're already backed up to here. Okay. Waiting to turn left into Gin Road and there's a lot right. of trucks that are turning left into Gin Road. Another another problem I see with, with this exit is uh, someone pulling out of there and trying to cross four lanes uh, to get into the turning lane to get onto Hagus Parkway at, at rush hour. I can see that being a problem. We talked about I, that. I that swear thing. I won't do it, but I can I can <laughs> see other people doing it. We talked about that. That was a, a concern. In fact, as we were looking at this positioning up and down, and we batted about that piece with the control of access, <coughs> as well as that, and, and Bill, in fact, made that point of uh, those vehicles that might be inclined or need to have to get over to here. His evaluation, though, based on the queue lengths that are queuing up here at this intersection on the southbound movements, between the two through lanes and then the right turn lane, we're okay. Okay, even at rush hour? Right, where we're located here, that somebody can get off into that left-hand turn lane over the Hygus. And that what was critical was understanding what the queues were on those through movements okay. and the right turn movements. So okay. yeah, we were cognizant of that. All right. Uh, now, going inside, if I may make a suggestion, if you would have that uh, drive-through lane for the restaurant, 
go straight down and dump into that one way and make that one way a two way, then you would be creating a, a typical intersection there. You see what I'm saying? And that would eliminate one exit dumping out into that area. And it would it would also give people coming into the parking lot for the restaurant, if their parking lot's full, it would give them an exit where they could continue out that way. Just a, just a thought. We're going to take that. We're going to think about that then. Okay. That's a piece that, yeah, I think let's take a look at that. And, okay. And obviously I think with a revised plan and uh, it will allow uh, Tom Earl to take a look at it as well. And, We've heard, I think, enough comments I, here. I just think that, that that one way going in there is kind of a waste. Um, you know, you could utilize that more if you turned it into a two-way and, and try to eliminate, um, you know, all that traffic coming together. Yeah, certainly to a point, in the, you know, the, the right turn in is for southbound traffic on Payne Road. So if you're coming south, kind of talking out loud here, coming south on Payne Road and you want to go to the restaurant, might it probably be likely that you're just going to turn right into Ginn Road and come in this direction. Certainly if you're looking to get into the drive through which the normal user who's familiar with the store says, all right, they're going to come to Ginn Road because that's really the only way to get into right. the drive through lane. Right. Uh, so, yeah, you're right in your suggestion about that, and, you know, maybe bringing this down in here. But, you know, I, I've heard now enough between uh, the board members here. I, understand that so I, I think we're maybe one small little tweak away to make that hit it yep so. yep one step away from perfection okay. it's taking a bit but we're, yeah. we're we're almost there all right that's all I had thank you thank you John thank you um, on that same point that Dave mentioned I, I, the, the break in the medium is that is that there strictly for one reason, and that's to let that residential house cross over. That's, that's why it's there. Because I, uh, that was my first thought too, that, that you know people would be taking a left in there, and if they were unsuccessful doing that, when they got to the next one, they're going to do a U-turn. They're going to find a way to get over to that, you know, access on Payne Road. I, I don't know what the resolution for that is, but it's, I, I, I would do that. I would be taking the right there, the first one to get in. <laughs> and I do it on Route 1 at uh, Rock and Roll Diner. You, know, you got the same situation up there. Um, so it's, um, yeah, I just see that as a, as a little bit of a problem. But um, but moving beyond that, because I think you guys have done a great job. But, you know, I, it does keep getting better and better. You've you, you made a ton of improvements. Sometimes I get frustrated with the process because I wish we had our hands on some of the materials that, you know, like, I'd rather have them in advance rather than, you know, have them displayed at the meeting uh, for the first time. So, and I think that's just kind of a, a flaw in the system. Um, hopefully we can improve upon it. Um, landscaping, um, thank you for addressing that. Um, taking another shot at the landscape piece of it. I did see something in there about the fire department. Uh, have, have you had a meeting with the fire department at this yes. point? So they're okay with the hydrant locations, yeah. emergency access, that they're okay with that? Yep. Okay. They haven't uh, seen this access plan though yet, but presumably you've run your template across it. But, correct. But certainly I would, I think as Mr. Chamberlain is speaking to, I'd encourage a discuss another meeting with them to just get there. And uh, anticipated DOT, DEP permits. So any idea how long? The DOT permit, uh, in fact, the draft has been done, as I understand, and uh, the signer of that, uh, Stephen Landry, is off on vacation this week, and so when he comes back next week, we fully expect by about midweek that that should be done. So uh, I commend the department and Derek Olson, who's new. I, we had not, at least I hadn't uh, worked with him yet, and he's been very prompt, so I appreciate all of that. That's, that's great. And the DEP's review. Uh, we retained the Cumberland County Soils and Water Conservation District, Chris Baldwin, uh, as the review person uh, to do that, and he just finished up his review today, and uh, by and large, he's 
good with our system, so we're looking to have him effectively sign off. That sign off has to go to the DEP. They hopefully will continue to nudge them because my goal was to try to get them buttoned up by the end of this month as well. So it only gives me a couple, a week and a half here to do that, but I, I think we're getting close. Okay. One last question for staff. Does the planning board have the authority to deal with previous subdivisions prohibiting access off Payne Road? Yep, you do. Yep. All right, just want to make sure. Yep. Uh, and that's all I have, but thank you again for all the improvements you made. I think we can <coughs> address all the points. Uh, it's turned out to be uh, a great project. Thank you. That's all I have. I know you've heard enough about the quagmire. I, have I don't a like that word. But I, I have a totally different issue than the rest of my fellow board members. Um, you might be able to make me feel a little bit better if I can understand the queuing better. <clears throat> We've got a lot of potential turning within that first 50 or 60 feet onto the site. I'm guessing that, it, well, this scale was 30 feet to the inch, but this is reduced. So I don't know from Payne Road up to the pumps or up to, I should say, uh, the beginning of the, uh, the, the restaurant drive-through driveway, just about where you are. How far are we f from there to Payne Road, roughly? 45 feet? Yeah, this is uh, about 5 to 7 feet here, 20 feet across here another 15 feet here, and another maybe 15, so yeah, okay. 60 feet or so. Maybe 60 feet. Mm -hmm. As I look at the traffic movement, everybody keeps focusing on the restaurant. I want to focus on the convenience store side and the pumps. I see a real nightmare with coming in off Payne Road into the main traffic aisle for both buildings and immediately allowing a left-hand turn into the pumps. I think the flow would be better if they came up counterclockwise and went into the pumps and you almost had a one-way flow through the pumps as well, which takes the western in front of the convenience store, in front of the pumps, that travel lane between the pumps and Payne Road would then be one way only, not two way, leaving or heading toward the main travel way. I just see we could have some queuing issues here. People are going to be trying to turn right. They're going to be trying to turn left. People are going to be trying to come out of the drive through We've got some craziness in in a very short period, and two cars is going to kill us in terms of flow. That's this piece right here you're suggesting as a one-way movement from south to north. Correct. With counterclockwise movement through the pumps. Okay? I, I just think it helps relieve the bottleneck at the entry. Something to consider. That's my word, quagmire. <laughs> That's your word. Okay? I think we have to look at that. I, I, I would like, like it if you would at least take a peek at that. In terms of the designs on your pumps, all right, the actual pump uh, piece of this, if you take a closer look at our design standards, you'll actually see a picture of the intent of the design standard that shows a physical column that hides the side of the pump. In other words, you've got three sets of pumps there. There would be three columns facing pain road that go up to the roof structure. And Currently our columns are on the inside of the, the pumps. Right, so this is on the exterior. 
again, as you're looking at your view corridor coming in off Payne Road, it looks more like a column or a building column, if you will, than it does the way you've got it shown there. And, uh, and my suggestion to you is that if you physically look at the design standard, you will see that very, very clearly as an architectural detail that we show with a physical picture. That's the intent that we want for service stations. Okay? If I might, this is actually a good segue because it's a caption or image here that I hadn't represented and I wanted, I put it up after the break and really we hadn't gotten a chance to talk about it, but mm -hmm. this particular image here done by Mark represents the view from the street looking through the canopy area. So I'm kind of circling that canopy, which we've had quite a bit of the discussion here about the, the pitch right. of that. Yep. And then the pumps, and those vertical lines, so to speak. And the, the aspect that Wes had talked about with the, the canopy area and the importance from their perspective of trying to, to a certain extent, minimize that because we're trying to really look beyond this canopy area into our building. We really want to see that pitch element of the, of the building, uh, the top here, and so forth. So that's their desire, at least as Wes has articulated right. tonight and, and we represented. And this particular caption, despite it just being black and white, trying to represent maybe the, I think the, the word that Mark may have used, a lightness of trying to maintain the visibility through that canopy area. We, un uh, we understand totally. Yeah. So, but I understand your interest in, uh, in what the guidelines are saying about these areas with those columns and Correct. those dispensers. Correct. All right, so just take a look at that architectural detail that we show, and it gives you the idea. I mean, the fact that the pumps are in the front, that ship has sailed, <laughs> okay? But part of the reason why we do some of the things that we do with our design standards is by putting pumps in the back. It allows you to have all kinds of great and wonderful architectural features on the street. You can do just a lot of what you want, and it helps you do that. But we don't have that today, so we have to make sure that we're doing the other things that we hope that we get from the design standards. Um, I think we've talked about mostly everything else here. Cleaning up all the staff comments, obviously, architecture, we've talked about visual. Um, one of the things, you did give us a bit of a visual, but when you come back, can you give us something that maybe is a little more of a color rendering of what we might see from the street? That would include your landscaping that you're planning? Is this image right here maybe something with some color and representing the landscaping in front here? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's what, what, what we're trying to envision is what you think we would see if we're in our car driving north on Payne Road or south. What do we think we would be looking into based on your building design? That's what we're trying to envision. Sure. Okay. All right. That will help us make some of our decisions. Um, and I've already talked to you about the red and green lettering, so, okay. Um, oh, crosswalks. Crosswalks on the site, are they painted? Actually, we've uh, called out for this crosswalk here to be the uh, textured uh, material. Yeah, all all material. of them, right? Right. All yeah. of them are going to be that way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I thought that's what you were going to say. Um, <laughs> Our details reflect that, yes. I'm sorry, guys. I got this thing about paint <laughs> crosswalk. No, I can't help it, it, but I am consistent. <laughs> the other question that I would have is, and, and, and I don't know if there's physically a space for this or not, but it's crazy what you do now because now when I walk around, you know, places that I go to, sh sh stores and everything else, I start looking for 
things and say, you know, where do people normally walk to and from places and, you know, did the planning staff provide crosswalks for good, safe, controlled access? And it amazes me how often we miss it. We really miss it. You know, it's like walking to a college campus. You can see where all the sidewalks should be because the grass is now mud, right? right? So one of the areas that I wonder about is should there be some kind of a crosswalk from the convenience store into the pump area to try to provide a little bit more of a safety zone for pedestrians or at least make people aware? Yeah, maybe off the edge of that into the, I just throw that out as a, you know, does that make sense? We'll because at this point you've got one that's going to the diesel pumps, but you've got nothing going to the pumps in the front. Take a look at it. Right? Okay, I'm done. Good. What questions do you have of us that we have not answered yet? I guess I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, we've added about a number of things, but I think none of it is insurmountable by any stretch that we can turn around. We, you know, we've done a lot of things on the plans. It's not, I don't believe, going to take us a lot to finalize this, get it back before you folks very quickly so that hopefully on the next agenda we could settle this and, sure. and be done. Sure. Permits in hand. And yeah. yeah. I, and I think and that's all ultimately dependent on those other permits as well because we understand the uh, town's requirements on having the other permits in hand. But but consider also if you want, I mean, if you're prepared before your permits come back and you want to review everything just in case that, we, you know, we, everybody feels like the I's are dotted and the T's across, then we could always bring you back as a consent item once you get your permits. Right. So don't feel like you have to wait for the permits in order to come back to this. Right. I, I, okay. We're certainly on that track that... We're going to do this turnaround on this final set here uh, as quickly as possible. So, for staff's benefit, sure, we'll be coming back very quickly. Uh, I've heard the importance here tonight about this area, and we'll examine that. And, and that includes the directional movement on this particular lane. So, we'll, I think, hopefully, get to that last five percent here of, of finalizing this. I think we're very close. Uh, the pieces, as you just mentioned, about the crosswalk, uh, I think that, that's one element. Um, then the canopy and, and uh, looking at that architectural piece just needs to have one final look. And then the additional information for the diesel canopy over here, but hopefully we'll nail yeah. that. And, and, and I, would I would envision that a, a, an approval would most likely be conditioned on the fact that you will need to come back once you know who your tenant's going to be for the restaurant. I mean, I prob we'll probably physically condition that requirement. I mean, you're going to most likely need to do it anyway because somebody's going to come in and say, yeah, okay, I want this three feet longer than that. And so, right. but... And without having your benefit of looking at any type of building architecture. Exactly. Value, so exactly. That's so most likely that'll, that'll occur. But I think on our off-site... Uh, given DOT's input and, and peer review and so forth, sound satisfied relative to things that are happening on Payne Road and Ginn Road. Uh, we know, as we've talked about, this left-hand turn lane, that would be the one element of, of the discussion tonight that I heard, uh, and, and we knew that already, that shortening perhaps of that lane a little bit. And we feel comfortable that everybody would, but John will observe that, you know, no left sharp turn in, but... Outside of that, well, I think, yeah. I, I think it makes sense to physically move it down just for that very reason. It gets the island in play and helps enforce the right in, right out only. So, Just one point I, I want to be sure that wasn't sort of lost in, in, into your off-site improvements. There was a comment about being sure that the uh, Payne Road work that you're proposing aligns with Payne Road to the south across the Highgate Parkway and how it tapers in north off this plan sheet. So I just want to be sure that that point wasn't lost in in the discussion of all the all the other merits and yeah, <laughs> items we're that we talked graphic about. So that will show all okay. of that as yep. well. And Bill and I talked about that. We're feeling pretty good actually in this 
transition area, you've got a pretty big gap of pavement there as you go across that intersection right, to be able to align with the, the lanes going southbound. Uh, but with this uh, reconfiguration, a little bit of the left-hand turn lane, it's going to help us and we feel pretty comfortable. We'll make that all work as we will uh, the north as well, but we've heard the comment from uh, Tom, so we'll, we'll handle that. And I think for the board's benefit, it's, it's generally helpful when applicants sort of come back, and particularly where you're trying to do a quick turnaround, if you can do a point-by-point -point response to all staff comments and peer review comments. Um, I know you did it for site design, so we could um, continue that. That would be good, helpful for the board and, and the review process. Any other comments from the board? No. We're good? I think we're good. It's been productive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, due to about three minutes, I'm going to give the applicant the option as to whether or not they want to proceed this evening or whether, or whether they want to call it an evening. Technically, we will see one more applicant, but it's up to you. We normally will not take any new item after 10.30. Okay, so technically we will see you as an applicant this evening if you want to proceed. If you do not want to proceed, we understand that and we will, okay. I'm sorry, I need to introduce it. <laughs> My apologies. It's getting late. Um, yeah, it's getting late. Our next item, Ram Management Company, Inc. requests a site plan amendment review for construction of a 16,200 200 square foot office building at 200 U.S. Route 1. Mr. Chase. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As is the theme of the evening, this is a continuation of the board's previous review. The applicant was before this board back in December, I believe it was, with their first um, site plan amendment, their first site amendment plan. Um, so they have received at least one round of staff comments and, and heard from the board previously, and so they've made modifications to their plans, which by and large addressed a large number of staff comments. Um, you will have received a, a revi uh, another round of staff comments in which we identified um, issues with regards to site access, uh, specifically sort of the, um, the ongoing discussion that we've had, both of this applicant and the applicant after this one, about a potential cross-easement between the two abutting properties. Um, that was really a discussion that uh, th this property owner began with this board back in 07, sort of had a conceptual notion of what, what a cross-access might look like, and it's um, be, I guess it would be interesting to see how that's going to be developed, um, what that plan will ultimately look like. At this point, we sort of have two plan sets that end at, the, at their property line, and so to try to see what that full, that full design is and, and get into that review, um, we think is, is the timing's great for that. Um, Let's see, another issue that we had previously raised and the applicant has certainly made amends towards is the notion of uh, where the zoning, require, the zoning ordinance requires a 25-foot buffer between residential districts and commercial districts. As you'll note on the easterly and northerly property boundaries, this site does abut residential uh, parcels. Um, and uh, previously, the applicant had, had their design went into that 25-foot buffer. They've now made modifications, so they're, they're outside that buffer area. Um, 
I guess the remaining concern staff has is just given the extent of work, we want to understand how that might impact uh, the root systems of those existing trees. Will there be adverse impacts? And if so, might the board want to see, you know, essentially take out a few of those trees that we know may be damaged and augmented with um, additional plantings? And that's, that's really more of a, a question that we still have as to what that would look like. Um, another element that was discussed last time had to do with the uh, development of a sidewalk along Route 1. Again, uh, consistent with the site plan review ordinance standards calls for uh, uh, applicants to develop sidewalks which have been shown on the town's tr uh, uh, Route 1 transportation plan. Um, and the site certainly uh, has that. And it was staff initially sort of identified that as being, uh, we thought should be developed. The applicant is indicating they're willing to give the town an easement for that. Um, it's staff's position that we believe that should be built um, and that would be consistent with the board's typical expectations. Um, let's see, I, uh, with regards to architecture, the applicants provided a rendering of one side of the building. Certainly, uh, you know, from all appearances, seems to be fairly consistent with the existing building and um, just had a few questions regarding the window treatments um, as well as, you know, what the board's expectation is for seeing sort of the full, the full building, you know, all, all four sides of the, of the building. Um, I guess the last item I'd uh, continue to note is we still have questions uh, as to site design with the location or th the fact that the applicant's not proposing to add any additional dumpsters. Again, we'll just echo our comments that we, we believe the present location is impractical um, from the existing office in light and, and particularly uh, where snow storage is uh, identified to be sort of uh, uh, put in the most direct line, if you will. Um, and so we still have some questions about about dumpster access. Um, I guess we have a few other minor points in our staff comments, but I think I've sort of hit the highlights. And with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much, and good evening. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Howard Goldenfarb, and I'm actually it's now Ram Management LLC. I think there was a change since we started this process. I am the managing partner versus the president of Ram Management Company. I'm not exactly sure how to proceed. We have comments from the from the staff, um, and I don't know if you want to raise them and we'll address them. Uh, you've raised a number of issues. We have comments, I believe, on all of the issues. Um, there was a comment, for instance, on the windows, and um, quite frankly, it was an error on my part, an error on the architect's part who drafted the windows will be exactly the same, not necessarily in the location, but in the in the panes and the volumes of the existing windows in the building. Um, I noticed when I went to pick up the colored rendering this morning that they had shown, this is the first time I had noticed in conjunction with the comments, was um, you know, the existing building has um, panes over the panes. With regard to the dumpsters, we provide a cleaning service to the tenants. Um, the cleaning service has the responsibility of uh, removing the trash and have indicated to us where the dumpsters presently are located works uh, perfectly well for them. Uh, we're prepared to discuss that further. Um, with regard to the sidewalk, um, I indicated that we would give an easement. Right at the moment, the sidewalk would be a sidewalk to no place. There's nothing on either side of us. We understand the intent of the town to create a sidewalk system. Um, it is a difficult time to do anything. We're trying to build a building in a very difficult economic environment. Prices have gone up and rents have gone down. Um, we would be prepared to give an easement and to build a sidewalk at the point that it became appropriate to do it in accordance with the town so that in effect, we're not just going to walk from one end of our property to the other end of our property. Um, Point, though, yes. just jumping ahead, sure. is that we have another proposal in front of us, which we won't get to tonight, unfortunately, in which they are going to build a sidewalk, and that's an about it to you. So it's not a up in the, up in the sky pie type of situation as far as the beginning to develop 
a sidewalk is concerned, uh, and you are right next door. So it's it's not an if, what, but, and situation. Just for your information. That, that to just add on to you, if, if that project gets approval, it's just like the connector between the two. I, I think that our, <coughs> our uh, traffic study indicates that we could go ahead with the existing entrance and exits. We're prepared to connect next door, but we have no control over that. If and we've had numerous discussions and agreements on exchanging whatever, if that happens, then we will do a connector between us as well as a connector in the sewer once, once um, the different cities determine the best way for them to, to access the sewer, whether it's through us or going underneath US 1. Same with the sidewalk. Um, all I'm saying is if the board would um, allow us not to add that expense at the front end until there is something to connect it to, that would be a help in trying to get the project off the ground. As I said, in a difficult period of time. I know that's not the board's problem, it's my problem. Um, but we're just asking, we will do it, we'll build the sidewalk. I have no idea what the standards are for the sidewalk. I'd love to see brick in front of our building because it's consistent with kind of the character of the place. I don't know if the board would do asphalt or how you want each individual sidewalk to be built. Is it up to the standards of the property owner? Is it up to the standards of the town? I haven't really seen anything specific about the sidewalk. I know what was done heading south towards Saco, and I don't know if that's what the plan is in this area as well. That's a good question, Jay. It, it would be to the town, it would become, it would be in the right of way, so it would be the town sidewalk. So we would coordinate with the public works director, typically you know, match up with the sidewalk that you see across the street, an asphalt type sidewalk. So what? There's a sidewalk across the street, excuse me. There is, yes. There's, there's, a length of, there's a length of sidewalk on the other side of Route 1. The, 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 the town plan is to connect sidewalk along this side of Route 1. What will ultimately happen with Dunkin' Donuts and classic eyewear and... and ultimately, we address that when they come in front of us for their next site revision. So if there is no site revision, there won't be any site. I mean, it's not something the town can require the developer, the, the owner of a property to do until they have to come in front of Yeah, I, yeah there's, I think the, the chairman identified the more likely scenario. Another scenario could be the town council could decide that they want to put a, a CIP, a, a, a capital improvement program together to build sidewalks along Route 1. Um, but yeah, so there's a number of different ways it could happen. The town could find, you know, there could be grant funding that becomes available. So there's a number of ways it could happen. But yeah, I, I think the chairman hit nail on the head. We sort of deal with those with each applicant as they become before this board. And the board's typical expectation, as you will see when you drive down Route One, is there are stretches of sidewalk sort of built, waiting, and they have been infilled as time progresses. When the sidewalk was done going down to its circle, that was done all as one. There was an existing sidewalk there, and that was a replacement. Yeah, that was a grant, sidewalk. some grant funding in addition to town town funding that occurred. Um, again, going back to the various notes, how would you like us to address that going forward? I'm sorry, I didn't. Going back to the various notes on design and staff comments, how would you like us <coughs> to address those? Do you want to discuss each one individually? I think the because typical Greg Michaelitis, our engineer from Tiger Bond, is here as well. Some of the some of the responses would come from him as it relates to certain subjects and stuff coming from him. Typically speaking, the applicant addresses each one of staff's comments as just kind of like in the order that they made them. Would you like then us to That would be great. Okay. Greg do you want to um, Yeah, the first one is site utilization and layout. Staff has reviewed the responses. No further comment at this time. You all have copies, I presume, of these reports? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm reading from, okay. Um, site access, which relates, I believe, to the um, uh, joining property. We are prepared to connect with them. It's something that um, we've had numerous discussions. Mike is here representing uh, benefit savings. Again, we have no control as to whether they'll get approval or not. We want to go forward with our project regardless and have done a, a, a traffic study which indicates I believe that we can do that safely. We are prepared to commit to um, continue to work and, and I think it's in both parties' best interest if we can come up with a connector. They show something on their present plan which they've run by us. We want to make slight modifications so we don't 
access our property from their side at the back of our building, move it up a little bit more towards the side. But that's something we can we can work through, so we're prepared to do that. Yeah, our principal concern there is that there is alignment between the two sites. So we also feel it's a great thing to have happen because it gives egress or even access through a through a uh, a light, a, traf a traffic signal. So I mean, it, I think it makes all kinds of sense. The concern that we have is that. We don't want to approve your site plan and have your driveway 10 feet or your access point 10 feet different from the access point that they put on their site plan. I, I understand. My only point is that, again, we have no control over their approval. I, I do understand So we're that. prepared to commit to do that. Perfect. But if they didn't show up here today or a year from now, because that site's been sitting there for a long time, we still want to like to go forward, and that's why we have the traffic study. Totally so understand. We are prepared to commit to do that. <laughs> totally understand. Um, internal vehicle uh, circulation. Um, pedestrian waste, uh, Route 1 sidewalk. As I said, we're prepared to commit to an easement and to build it. A preference would be to build it, again, in conjunction with it going someplace, even if it's only next door, simply for a cost basis. Um, but that's up to the town as to how they want to deal with that. But we're prepared to do it. Again, I don't know what the standards are. I don't know what the cost is that's related to it. I would prefer not to have asphalt in front because we try to maintain the exterior. I don't know if there's any ability to make a change to the sidewalk in front of our space versus the rest of the sidewalk. I, I've not seen any design standards. Yeah, I think we, can, we can coordinate on the town's typical expectation as it will become town infrastructure and be dealt with you know, maintained and repaired by our by town staff, uh, by the public works department, and, and that, that with town tax dollars, there's certain expectations of what that will be and be consistent with what is expected for the rest of the road system. Um, the other items before Greg steps up from the staff plan comments were uh, for me to address is the uh, architecture and signage. Um, I don't know yet what the tenancy is going to be on the back building. It could be a single tenant, which really alters the kind of signage we would do. Clearly, the monument sign that we have now would be insufficient. But whether we raise it up so we can have more plaques or we do something different will somewhat depend upon what happens. And clearly, I would hope that that would be a condition and you know, the approval of the sign. At this point, it's very early on to make that decision. But Something would have to be done because there's no additional room there for additional um, tenants. Um, outdoor storage, uh, we talked about dumpsters. Um, again, the dumpsters that we have are sufficient to service both buildings in terms of size or they could be increased. Um, the, the cleaning service has indicated that that's acceptable to them to use one location of dumpsters. From an aesthetic perspective, I would prefer to leave them where they're less visible than any place else. It's up to the board again if, if that's not a satisfactory response. On that item, could you just speak to, uh, when I went back and looked at your previous site plan, the location where the dumpsters are identified on this site plan was identified as a basically a turnaround location for a dead end parking lot, uh, parking, yeah, parking field. So just, I guess that issue should be addressed in some fashion. I think this board would typically agree with you that having the dumpsters more shielded from the public way is certainly uh, what what our ordinances look for and what the board's expectation are. But I do think that that point does, you know, this is a time to address that issue as well. There are two responses to that. One, in six years, and our office overlooks that, there has never been a need to do that. Um, and that building is not going to change in terms of its occupancy, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, there's really not a turnaround area in there. It's, it, it's just space. If somebody is in a parking space, they can back out. But in six years, with a sp in six years with, with the cheese eye in there, there's never been a time that that space has been completely filled, either the side spaces or the spaces behind the building that I'm aware of. Um, so. I, I, that's really my response. Um, design standard for commercial districts. Um, the windows. Um, 
as I said, the windows will be the same. Uh, the one thing, one other thing they left off of the shutters will be your shutters as well. As to what the building is going to look like from the side and the, the two sides in the back, um, it's not going to look exactly like the front, nor does our existing building look exactly the same from the side and the back. It, and again, it'll somewhat depend upon the use. We're not going to build a speculative building. Um, not while I still have my sanity. I'm not going to do it in this marketplace and just build an empty building. And some of it will depend upon the ultimate use of the interior of the building, whether it's a single doctor or a, a medical um, um, surgery unit. That will depend upon how the floor plan lays out as to the windows. The intent will be whatever windows are put in will be consistent with the windows that we show on the front, uh, not necessarily in location, but certainly in in style. Um, and as an office building, you want to maximize the windows as much as possible. But since we don't yet have the layout of where the stairs will be, and we don't have the layout as to where the elevator will be, and those impact as they do now, for instance, in the existing um, barn building, the, the, uh, the larger of the two buildings in our existing site. As you notice, if you look on the side of that building, there's a section where there are no windows at all. There's a consistent row of windows, many of which we added when we bought the property. Then there's one section of no windows, and that's because when Steve Center built it, he chose to put, for his internal reason, the staircase, the staircase against the front of the building. And for that reason, he put no windows in that staircase. Until we determine the interior of the building, um, we don't have the exact layout of where the windows are. But whatever windows we put in will be consistent in terms of style, mullions, panes, with the existing windows. Um, what we're showing is existing windows and existing windows on the building. Um, Greg, would you like to respond to the other uh, site plan uh, staff comments? Greg McElite is from Ty and Bond. I'll just go through the items that Howard didn't. So he addressed A and B. Uh, C is the internal vehicle circulation. That, that's been a discussion point since back in November. Um, we had, as you recall, the traffic study traffic engineer was here in December. Um, the, uh, we have two entrances. One of them, the, the one closer to me, is going to be with the um, raised island right in, right out only. We had a 17-foot wide entrance. That was to, so the fire trucks could get in. The first review comment we got back was to um, Wide, uh, less than the width of that road, sorry, slate, uh, to uh, 11 feet wide. So we put turning templates on that. 11 feet wide didn't work, so that's why we had the slope granite curb. The review comp, because we, for that island, we assumed the fire truck was going to have to ride up that island, so we put slope granite curb. Review comments came back, put vertical granite curb with 11. We kind of held our ground and said, no, we kept sloped in 11. We know it doesn't work, but for a fire truck, they can ride up that curb. So there's two options tonight, folks. One is to keep what we have is 11 foot wide, slope granite curb, the fire truck would ride up that curb, which is fine, or go back to a wider entrance, which is the 17 foot wide entrance. We can keep the exit at 11. So that, that's, that's our quandary right now. There's, the traffic engineer recommended that, you know, this entrance, because the proximity to intersection right in, right out, no left. We, we're fine with that. We've done that. The other intersection's fine. So right now it's, and we can talk about this offline with staff. I, we'll, do, we'll do whatever you want. We just, the one thing I, where I held my line with my stamp was I wasn't going to put 11 foot wide vertical curb and you're going to be popping tires. So that's why I have slope granite curb. Everything else we have vertical granite, but that, that's the situation there. And if I may just add one comment, that becomes a moot point that we can act next door. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So we have to do To that point, you say that becomes a moot point because this right in, right out would go away at that point? It's, okay. Yeah. And that, yeah. Okay. So I guess we're willing to work with you. We'll, we'll, yeah. do, what, we'll do whatever I, you folks want. I mean, that's it, it may be helpful. I can just sort of interject a little bit. We, I've spoke, speaking with the fire department, they're comfortable with the 11-foot wide, provided it's mountable. 
Bill Bray in his review, his concern with it being sloped is people could potentially take that left turn lane out. However, if they go to the vertical curb, then those lanes need to actually widen out. Our fire department will actually require them to be 20 feet wide. So taking the left turn out will become even easier because you'll have a huge right. width to turn out. So right. it's planning staff's estimation that what they're proposing, though maybe not at the you know 100 percentile, it's it's as good as we're going to get to meet sort of both masters, if you will. And so planning staff's perspective is what you, you've held your ground on the right item. Okay, good. That's fine. <laughs> we're good with that. Um, so let's see. Uh, D, regarding snow storage, um, what the applicant has agreed to, if the snow, we, we've shown some <coughs> snow storage areas. If the snow becomes too much, the applicant agrees in order condition to haul uh, snow, you know, legally dispose of off-site. So um, that, that's how we're going to, we still want to have a nice landscape site, and, and that's that's Howard's intent. So um, if we'll agree to uh, in order that as an order of condition. Um, Howard addressed E, F is regarding the uh, buffer plantings. I just want to clarify that. the We're raising that site out back about four feet, so we're going to have a retaining wall. So the existing grade in that buffer is going to stay flat and preserved, and then we're offset we're coming up four feet as, as we fill that back portion of the uh, parking lot. So, and then the intent is again, um, Howard and I talked about this tonight. You can make an order of condition. You know, we are going to have a construction fence to protect that buffer. Howard, obviously, you can see what he's done out there. His his vision is to keep as much landscaping as possible. So we're okay with an order of condition that um, if the town wants to come look at it prior to start of construction, you know, where that construction fence is, we're fine with that. We're going to make the contract and do that anyway. So, but I think it's less of a concern. If we were cutting, it'd be more of a concern where we're cutting into a buffer, but we're actually going to be four foot higher. So that natural vegetation is going to be, that the vegetation to be preserved is going to be, um, I think it's going to be fine. Does that make sense? That, that does make sense to me. I think I, I, I was a little unclear on, I, I saw that there was the, the, the fence or the retaining wall was going in. I wasn't quite sure what the earthwork around putting that in was going to be. But if it's you're sort of laying it on the existing grade, right. that does seem to indicate that there won't be quite as much impact as I might have originally envisioned. Okay, and then, um, so that takes care of F. G was stormwater management. We do have our uh, M, uh, DEP approval on that, yep. and we submitted that to you folks. Um, lighting, I think it was just we concur. It's eight to twelve foot fixtures. We we have checked with the um, manufacturer. They are dark sky compliant. The new fixtures, and uh, they will have um, timers. And then Howard talked about I, K, and L. There was no J, and uh, I think that does it. So that that's really what we think we are. We're obviously we're. Hopefully we can get uh, an approval from you folks. We, we have uh, we also have sanitary uh, Scarborough Sanitary Sewer District approval, and we submitted that. Okay. At this point, I'll turn it over to the board. Anybody? John. No, no. Um, thank you for all the updates. Um, Looks like it's going to be a fantastic project. I just want—I just have one issue, and I just, just clarification. If the agreement between your butter and yourselves, as far as access, access works out, what happens to that right in, right out? Does that does that go away and become? Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's good. That's the only question I have. Thank you. Dave? Thank you. Uh, I have no questions. Uh, I like the project and uh, I, I wish you the best. Thank you. Harry? Um, I'm, uh, thank you for some of the updates. Uh, that, w that was very helpful because I had a lot of questions. But um, on the issue of the sidewalks versus an easement, um, have we given anybody um, a waiver on the requirement to build the sidewalks? No one's asking for a waiver to not build it. It's well, not build it immediately. Uh, true. 
have we allowed that before? Uh, in the, on the Route 1 corridor, in my time, the applicants have built them. I think, you know, um, I can think of a number of examples where, it's particularly in the Haigas Parkway where we just redid that, there were a number of sort of spots that were jumped around them when the town did the Haigas Parkway project. We now have a pretty significant sidewalk connection up there, so I'll not to say, you know, those previous boards behind this board's never, decision. Never say never, but in my eight years, I don't recall us doing that. Okay. Um, if I may ask, have there been many private sidewalks built? With okay, private sidewalks, I mean by the, by the owner of the property versus the <laughs> When they're in areas that are shown as having a sidewalk on a town approved plan, yes. There have been some that have been built. Yes. I said it. I would say more than some. It would be very consistent with the board's yes. past actions would be to. And they've all been built to the same standard. Yep. Which is asphalt with the granite curbing. Granite right, you have the curbing, so it would be, it'd be yep, yep. And so we can look at the details of sort of, we, we try to get an esplanade where possible, but again, we recognize we have to work within the confines of your existing, you know, you have certain landscaping in, you know, so. We can we can look at the details with your engineer as to the location that makes the most sense. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the things like the tree save plan and, and the other architectural rendering. Um, and you know, once again, think we should um, adhere to our standards in general. That's it. All right. Thank you, Ron. What are we voting on tonight? I guess I'm confused. Do you want final approval tonight? They're looking for final approval tonight. I mean, I I still have a few holes. Well, so do I. That's so. why I'm asking the question. Yeah. So I'm just going to back off with that statement, and I still have a few holes that need to be, I mean, condition of the sidewalk. Uh, some of the issues that were presented by staff that I have on here. Um, I don't have all the answers to all the questions, is what I guess what yeah. I'm saying. I'll leave it to Jeff. Go ahead. Um, you are looking for final approval tonight. I, I, I don't think there's any outstanding issues that we can't deal with. I don't think there's any outstanding issues that we can't have a I'm not sure what we haven't addressed. I thought we went through all Can of Can you give me written responses tonight to staff's comments? Oh. Yeah, I can probably do it on the iPad. I'm trying. But <laughs> I mean, that, that's my point. I, I, I don't think we need to complicate this. Okay. I can see that we might be able to bring this to a consent item, all right? But what I would like to see happen is the items that we brought up get addressed written responses back to staff's comments so that we nail everything down, right? So when the issues of sidewalks come up, everybody knows where everybody stands. When I still think and I truly understand your concern about um, connectivity uh, in terms of the two sites, but depending upon which way you go, in one case we eliminate a curb cut, in one case we don't. The issues of whether it's 11 foot and you know non-vertical granite curves or whatever that all of that goes away, and the site plan now becomes a little clearer defined. I would really like to see a meeting between staff and you and our applicant for next door to kind of sit around the same table, come to an agreement on where things are going to fall so that we know that it works on both site plans. And if we can make that happen, then I think we can condition approval on, you know, whether this site gets built, this is going to happen. And if this site doesn't get, get but, built, but then I, this is going to happen. But I believe we have that. In other words, um, they could take six months. They, it could take them six months or a year. They could change their mind. I, and not build the building at all. We have agreed to connect. 
We also have a plan that shows what happens if we don't connect, which is an acceptable plan. We have a traffic engineer, et cetera. So the, that issue really is not an outstanding issue. Internally, exactly what's going to happen on the street is one thing. What's going to happen internally somewhat depends upon the finalization of their plan, which is outside of our control. It could be months. They could stop their plans. And that just ties us up going forward. Not, not looking to do that. Yeah. What I'm looking to do is to provide an approval that has the appropriate conditional language that addresses the issue that everybody agrees to. And the only way I can do that is to get everybody around one table. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a meeting to occur where everybody does that good old-fashioned handshake and says, okay, if you do this, I'm going to do this. And I'm good with that because then we can kind of put in some conditional language into our approval that allows people to not have to come back for site plan changes down the road. I mean, I think that we can set it up. It's kind of like if this goes forward, we use site plan A. If it doesn't go forward, we use site plan B. Nobody's got to kind of come back and make, you know, go through the whole process again. I don't want to be the dead horse, but this is my concern purely from my perspective as the owner of our property. Um, but but oh, what we're asking hold is... On, hold, on, hold on, Ron. So hold on. Just, I'm perfectly glad to meet their location of where they want to connect to our property could change during the approval process because of an issue that is raised by the board, which means that maybe exactly, let's say right now it shows roughly about here. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, we're actually back. We're over there on the buggy show that is planned. But that's why I'd like both you guys to sit down together. I mean, that's truly the intent. And I, I'm not looking for months and months of delay here. I think we'd go out of our way not to. Uh, yeah, I, we're, we're not. What we don't want to stand here and be an obstacle. We want this connectivity to occur. Yeah, as we okay, to everybody wants it to occur. So I mean, for anybody to stand up and say, "You're not going to, we're not going to let you do that because we want two trees there." That's not going to happen. Okay, I, we're, I don't think that we as a board have that record, if you will, of how we perform. So I, I'm not saying you do. Right. Just and I understand that. It, we do not, and, and that's exactly my point. My point is, if I can get everybody into a room and everybody kind of has a handshake agreement, town has it, applicant B has it, you have it, I think this is all going to work, and we can make this almost a conditional approval for you, ease your pain, and three weeks from now you have exactly what you want. Okay? Can I, can I jump in, Mr. Chair? All I was going to add to what you say is we just want this meeting in writing, and the writing is if, if we have an agreement, this is what's going to happen. If we don't have an agreement, this is contingency B in front of us so that we got you covered both ways, but we need it, you know, Finalized. I hear what you're saying. You have a handshake. Well, I think that's that, all we can. Well, whatever. No, you can. You can get together, and it can be put on paper. What we have committed to the town is that we will connect with them if they get approval. Right. If we don't, if they don't get approval, then we go with the plan that has been submitted, which is the 11-foot. And I think to the to the chair's one of the chair's previous yeah. points to have that in writing, and uh, you know the notion of you know. When you connect, that the you know that the proposed write in write out, what what's going to happen in that area? We don't have a plan that shows that right now. So I think just having that in writing, sort of what the expectation is for, you know, sort of what your site would look like once that connection happens, and I think we can. Whatever you want. Right. And I, one comment to the chair, and I'll the line. But Jim, we're all here tonight. You can, can you? at the mic. Yeah. Um, 
Blake Ian representing the different savings for the uh, for the record. <clears throat> we thought we might be able to discuss this tonight. We obviously, it'll be at the next meeting or at some point between now and the next meeting. But we had Tom here and Andrew here, and we have several scenarios that are in your packets and several other scenarios outside the box that we we're going to share with you. But all of them have one common thing: is that we our queuing area. The way it goes in and goes out needs to be back about 60 feet. We can't really pull it more towards the front, according to Tom. So that would be something Howard, uh, in telling me tonight, he kind of likes the connecting, but he'd like to see it further to the front. And Tom thinks that's really going to be a problem with traffic coming in and all that sort of stuff that he could explain at a at a meeting. But other than that, all the rest of the scenarios that we're going to get into would have that we've realigned. For John's thing, we're realigned in this thing. The intersection coming in is more of a buffer, but we do need to be 60 feet back. If if the issue becomes the reason we showed one way out that way because he was a little concerned again about queuing coming in, if we don't make sure that that says is identified right, if somebody blocks that area and all the traffic coming in from Route One, so that's the discussion that needs to take place. Sure. And if the meeting of the minds comes down to the fact that says it's not going to work for one side or the other, then it's it's done. Yeah. Everybody knows what we're working with. As far as location okay. goes, it would have to be further back on the side. So that, that's what works that's why us. we want to bring you all together, right? And then you'll make the right decision. We know you'll make the right decision for your sites. So that's what we're trying to get to. I yes. conclude, can I conclude my <laughs> Absolutely. The only other comment I would have is firming up the condition of the sidewalk somehow as a condition for the approval. That's all I have. Right. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That's part of the answering the the verbal or not the verbal, the written response to staff comments hopefully does that because that's one of the items that's one of the common items. It is a great project, it's a great building, it's just some formalities we need to do to yeah. so Thank you. I think that would be a helpful item to get the board just to finalize tonight. Is the board's expectation that the sidewalk should be built at this time, or are you comfortable with the notion that it be built out at some future date? I would not. I, I, I think that would be helpful for the board to give the applicant sort of their marching orders, so to From speak. From a consistency standpoint, we have always asked the applicant to build it up. That's the direction I would go to. I mean, if we want to do a straw poll. No, I would agree. I would agree. Dave? It's okay to disagree, Dave. I'll pass. You'll pass. All right. Ron? It should be built, but only in where it's in that location. I don't expect a, a long sidewalk, and hopefully it would be in conjunction with the new quote-unquote or butter. Yep. Yeah, that's no, it's in front of their building. It's right. in front, front of their park. Yep. Okay. So, Jeff? I, I will go with the rest of the board. Okay. So, there's our opinion. Any other questions? So I'm not sure how to <laughs> uh, what, what are we doing? All right. Here's what we were asking. All right. I'm asking you to do two things, basically. All right. I'm asking you to send us a written response to staff's comments. Your physical response to staff's comments. Okay? Other than the sidewalks, which have now been decided. Other than the uh, Well, you can still send your written response to the sidewalks if you want, you, but you know how the board feels about that. Okay. And then we're asking you to hold a meeting with staff, the two uh, potential abutting uh, companies, all right? Hold that meeting with staff so that we can come to some conclusion, one way or another, as to what's going to happen with the connectivity. And then from there, once we know what that is, then you know we'll move to a rapid approval of your property, because I believe that from a comment standpoint, 
we're primarily satisfied. Right? We just need to know what we need to condition and what we don't need to condition. And will final approval come in the form of another meeting like this, or will it come in the form of the Yes. What we write may, you may disagree with. When we talked about, for instance, the dumpster. So how do we discuss that out? Are you simply, so you're talking about coming back for another meeting? We would, you would come back hopefully at our next meeting and we'd move through the process very quickly uh, depending upon how your response gets in more or less determines the order of which you hit the docket and understand that the applicant that didn't get to speak tonight will be number one on the docket next week or next meeting. That's generally how it runs unless there's a public hearing all right, that we don't know about at this point. So I guess to, to that end, Mr. Chair, not to belabor this meeting, but it sounds like one of the other outstanding points of, of discussion between what staff's comments are and what the applicant's response is re, does regard the dumpster locations. Right. And it, it comes down to whether or not we're satisfied with the fact that they're, um, they're uh, janitorial, service. janitorial services, yeah. Yeah. Okay. you know. Is an adequate response to that. So, you want to take another straw poll right now on that? We can if you want to get it done. I don't have an issue with that at all. All right. I don't have an issue with I that. I don't have an issue with it. There we go. <laughs> There's the majority of the board not having an issue with the dumpster <laughs> location. All right. I, you know, it's like. <laughs> you the those, those are you. Stop while you're ahead. Yeah. still have to address it. <laughs> you still got to send us a letter. But I mean, if. Don't you know. some of these out. There you go. Okay, thank you. Our next item this evening is an administrative report. Mr. Chase. I do not have anything to report this evening. A town planner's report? Uh, let's see. Um, the, the council or the long range planning committee uh, continues their work and, and will be forwarding their recommendations on the uh, uh, light industrial district uh, along the Payne Road, um, I'm sorry, the Holmes Road area to the council shortly. Um, I guess that's about all I have to report at this time. Okay, any correspondence? Seeing none. Planning board comments. The only comment that I would have is I would assume you'd want to hold on to your packages for benefit savings. Yes. All right. We may not get another submission, so I'd hang on to that. Um, Another planning board comment is, unfortunately, I apologize, I will not be here at the next meeting. I am going to be in beautiful Chicago. So I have talked to Corey. Corey has uh, put this on his calendar, so he should be here at the next meeting. But um, I just can't get out of this, unfortunately. So that's where I will end up being. And outside of that... The board will take a motion to adjourn. Take a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Great. Good evening and thank you. It would if...